Hello and welcome to another episode of Do Go On. My name is Dave Warnicky and as always, I'm here with Matt Stewart and Jess Perkins. I'm a special guest. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm a regular feature here. Some people call me part of the furniture. Um, Dave, you're fine. I just want to let it, uh, you know and the audience know. Dave, no, 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 you're fine. Yeah, um, was- Jess, you're fine. <laughs> Say it with confidence. You're fine. There it is. Um, well, and I want to give you a fine for that. That was, oh, that yeah, was awful. I think that's fair enough. <laughs> I mean, I was, you know, it was a little riff to get us going, no, warming us up. He's a feminist. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Because, well, I mean, here's something that I want to put to you. It's a question, but I think we all know the answer. Mm. How hot are women? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and how good is it to be alive? These are questions I ask uh, and answer uh, really good. And- <laughs> No doubt about it. Uh-huh. I think so they're in reverse sw- yeah, order. But sw- flip them around. Flip but them. Otherwise, yeah. No, it's good. Thanks for having me on your podcast. Yeah, thanks for being here. Um, we like to elevate women. That's why I'm <laughs> lifting you up above my head right now. Um, and we'll cut all this riff out, I assume. AJ, our great editor, will probably clean this uh, up, make us leave all sound it pretty and good. Turn it up, we'll, I leave reckon. It all <laughs> and there's one way to get to this fantastic riff even quicker each week and that is we've started uploading our episodes new episodes to patreon ad free yeah that's right it's exciting um if the ads drive you absolutely bloody bananas you can uh, listen to them ad free on patreon but if i can just can i just get in real close for a second if i'm just asking matt and dave if that's oh, okay yeah, if you don't oh, mind you want if, to I, talk- if i have a quick word with them as well okay you will we'll- yeah, we'll um, me and Dave will chat amongst ourselves. Okay, just, this is sort just, of off the record. Okay, just, oh, okay. Just, just between us as well. Is that all right, Dave? Said she does that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. If you, well, if you don't so mind that. the ads or if you're in a position where you can just, like, skip ahead, um, do that. Keep listening on the ads because that's how we keep the lights on in the studio. But, um, yeah, so if, if that doesn't bother you, keep doing that. But if the ads are really annoying or you're in the car and you can't skip or whatever, or you're, you're sneakily listening at a workplace where you're not supposed to have headphones on, but but you do, and you're like, I can't get my phone out to skip ahead, that's okay. Listen to the ad-free one. Um, but, you know, just a uh, just balance. Um, yeah, so- <laughs> Oh, hey, sorry, just um, before you go on, can I just- You two, just give me a moment. I just want to- if. If the advertisers are listening, can you come in? I just want to talk to the advertisers. Okay. Yeah. We'll, just, we'll just talk about ourselves over here. Hey, advertisers, um, don't worry about what Jess said there. It's all nonsense. Uh, I'm going to let the listeners know now that they should really support all your uh, products and if anything that we plug, uh, we really believe in <laughs> and uh, I think that's important that they know that. So I'll let them know that in a second. Okay. Sorry, guys. Do you mind if I quickly talk to the listeners again? Sure, sure, sure. Hey, listeners, come in just quickly. Here. Actually, Dave, can you come in as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 hey what's Dave, going on? Do you mind um, letting the listeners know about uh, the advertisers and, and that they should, you know, support them? Yeah, yeah, hey, hey, guys, you should really, really support these advertisers. Some of them are struggling. You know, you don't really. You don't actually this. have to whisper. You don't actually. You have to do a stage whisper, otherwise people <laughs> listening in the car cannot hear you. I just, I just want to say <laughs> <laughs> You're supporting so much. Just like, just do this with your hands, Every, and it creates a bit of a. Okay, and I can step back in further. Yeah, there you go. So what I want to do, <laughs> <laughs> you are just so important to us. And do one part. We will continue to support. Okay, you. I'm just going to jump in because. Um, just, just so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's early to have descended into chaos, isn't it? And now a word from our sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, exciting. We do have uh, ad free. On the Patreon at it's, the it's the bonus level or above, which mm. means you also get access to two hundred and ten bonus episodes, also ad free, plus three every month. Soon to be four, yeah. new ones every single so month. So it is actually a it's a pretty good deal. If anything, we're underselling ourselves there. Yeah, that's just right. so that you know that if you are like, mm, should I join over? Yeah, okay, trust me, <laughs> you won't regret it. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you there. Patreon dot com slash do go on pod. Now with that out of the way, Matt, how? The bloody hell does this show work? Oh, so uh, one of the three of us usually uh, when Dave's here and- um, (laughs) A bit of a little eye roll there. Okay. When he bloody shows up for work. Okay, guys. All right. Uh, (laughs) One of the three of us will uh, go away, research a topic. Well, I will go away. I just won't research a topic or be on the show. (laughs) Normally, the topic's been suggested by a listener. Uh, We'll just uh, really soak ourselves in the topic. We'll, We'll fill a bath up. Full of the topic, and we'll just sit in there and just uh, let it flow over us for sometimes a week, two weeks. Uh, sometimes, you know, if time pressure is on, a couple of 
couple of days. <laughs> a couple of minutes. A couple of minutes. <laughs> That's harder. But, um, and then we bring back that knowledge in the form of kind of like a school oral presentation. Mm-hmm. It's like you're in year 11 again. <laughs> we'd, we'd, we'd never say we're at a year 12 level. No, no, no. You're like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> we're not doing like Harvard referencing yeah, or anything Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> no, 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 no. And uh, this week, Dave is doing the report. His first one in what feels like- uh, probably a few months, I reckon. And he- Yeah, first one of, of the year, is it? Yeah. And he is- For, for well- what, of the, Sorry, recording. We, recording. I had, my last one was in January, I believe. Yeah. That uh, came out. And yes, we to get onto the topic, uh, the the report giver asked a question. Dave, do you have a question this week? Yes, but I maybe I've forgotten how to ask a question because this one, you can you can both just answer on your own time. Uh, looking for an answer from both of you. Okay. So, I imagine it's a, an easy point out of the way. It's just like, what's your favourite colour? It kind of. It's just, do right. you think that in an emergency, you could land a plane? Oh, my God. Okay. Well, I don't think I could land a plane outside of an emergency. So, inside of an emergency? <laughs> yeah, you, I think so. It's like were, that thing where you can lift a car if, yeah, if there's a kid under there in or an something. Emergency. In an emergency. Isn't there some sort of insane statistic that- um, like a huge percentage of men. Yes, absolutely. So basically, I've I've talked about this with my wa- my wife for many years because every time we get on a plane, she has said for years, I think in an emergency, I'd be able to land a plane with radio assistance. Yep. Someone to tell me what to do. Is this the same woman who doesn't think you can have a hit song? <laughs> She doesn't think I can have enough. She believes in herself, though. If there was enough confidence to go around, that'd be nice. <laughs> She's saving it all for oh, herself. She thinks she could have enough one. <laughs> <laughs> but this question, Jess, you're absolutely right, hit the media last year because in January 2023, 20,000 adult Americans were asked the question, this is the wording, how confident are you that you could safely land a passenger aeroplane in an emergency situation relying only on the assistance of air traffic control? of the responders were confident they could. And of the men asked, that figure rise to 50%. Incredible. Incredible. So, Matt, you and me, I'm a no. Oh, damn it. I guess I'm a yes then. You have to be a yes. Damn it, I hate stats. But of the three of us, who would you trust? Well, you, of course. You, (laughs) three of us. Because if we bring women back into it, that's 30%. It's a yes from you. That's almost- no? I've seen you park I'm a car. So, I, what, yeah. what, I mean, what's landing a plane a, apart from parking a, a exactly. big flying a very car? Big fly- <laughs> I think I would actually. I think I think I would if if it was down to the three of us, I'd be like Matt, do it. Would you? Yeah, he's the oldest. <laughs> That's um, right, he's got he's, the least to live for. <laughs> he's sometimes, but most of the time, he's pretty good in a cry. I think, yeah, in like a stressful situation, he's pretty good. Yeah, I think you are good. My brain slows down. Yeah. But that's good. Even further. Even further. <laughs> but when- Or is you as in like time slows down or you don't respond to time around you? I, know, I think, yeah, I think, I think uh, yeah, everything goes in slow motion. You would have seen me like in a thing where it looks like I'm zipping around, like almost to the point you can't even see me. Yeah. You know, and I'm moving like I'm putting, changing your hat. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. like, whoa, what happened there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's like that. Right. And you've got like sort of, sort of three little cups on the ground and you're sort of going, which one is it? Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm like, that, you know, that X-Men scene. Yeah. That that's, was based on me. Yeah. You know, that X-Men that's scene where that guy zips around. <laughs> Mr. Zippy? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Zippy. <laughs> Yeah, my favourite X-Man. My favourite X-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Zippy. Um, but to just answer your question, I don't think I could, no. Because two no's and If yes. it was like, so it's a commercial plane, there's so many other people on the plane. Yeah, that's the crazy part, isn't it? Yeah. Somebody else is going to have more, like, a better chance. If it's like a little two-person plane and I'm, reckon- I'm the other person. Y- you have to do it. Yeah. I. Well, obviously, because otherwise how the fuck do I get yes, down? No, but more- nobody can come up to me, can they? That is more what we're going to talk about today. Oh, when God. I was in the Bahamas, have I talked about this on the po- on the podcast? I had to take a very small plane from one island to another, and they made they weighed us all and put us on in weight order. Mm. And I was the last to get on the plane. You're the even, heaviest on the. Uh, no, it was the lightest. Lightest. Even second. though there were three teenage girls, one who was probably 13 years old, but I was still at the back. Actually, no, maybe she was just behind me. So. I think from now on, you should line up in terms of who's most confident to land a plane. Yeah, that's and what again, first, class should be re- yeah. first class should be reserved for people who- Pilots. Can fly the plane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Which, are, which means rich people, I mean, apart from those ones who are like pilots- um, Yeah. They're useless and they apart, can be in the back. They don't have any real like skills, rich people. Tom Cruise types who like- Yeah, John have Travolta's- a, Have a and, license in everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there. I think that is a thing as well that rich people do. But often, because you always hear about them dying in plane crashes, so that, that yeah. doesn't give you confidence. Mm, no. Just because they have the license, you know, John Denver, 
uh, Hansi Kronje. <laughs> Do these I people think fly in the plane? Oh, well, there you go. Different. Don't know why I know that. There you go. <laughs> Well, it was alright, and I think you're right. It's also, I would, I think, if I had, uh, if I had booked a ticket on that plane, and then we get there and they say we just have to weigh you all and load you onto the plane in order of weight, I'd be like, I'll stay here, thanks. <laughs> I'll walk. <laughs> I'll, I'll be right. It was, and then also the as they the two pilots got on board, and you can see them there, right there. There's no separation. It's one of those tiny planes, and then they start. They make what I assume was a safety announcement. You couldn't hear it over the engine, so yeah. I had no idea what was going on. But anyway, uh, to answer my own question, was I correct? I was not. He died in a plane crash in 2002. <laughs> okay. So uh, sorry, Fonzie Cron, yeah, or John Denver's families are listening. I'm sorry if I sounded a bit flippant there. Um, may they uh, they rest in peace. Great. So, becoming a professional pilot takes years of study, simulation, and supervised practice. Landing is arguably the hardest part of flying a plane, especially in a large commercial jet. The conversation.com breaks it down as... To breaks land. it down. That doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, rough, rough. It's fine when he does it. Breaks it down. That was great. Oh, just said, went- I thought you said I said barks it down. That's what I said. No, he said breaks it down. He just went like full Aussie <laughs> suburban accent. Ah, oh, breaks it down. Just appealing to the the, the battlers out there in the suburbs. <laughs> in the <laughs> suburbs. <laughs> breaks it down. <laughs> All right, guys. You know what they're like out in the burbs? Out in the burbs, something that Dave's yeah. not experienced with. Mm. You never get out of the burbs, never, do you, Dave? I've never met any of them. <laughs> you stay over there. <laughs> <laughs> the D and CBD is Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Central <laughs> business, <laughs> Dave. <laughs> <laughs> to land successfully, a pilot must keep an appropriate speed while simultaneously managing gear and flap configuration, adhering to... <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got off to a weird one, haven't we? <laughs> flap. That's fun. Flap though. configuration. Yeah. What's your flap configuration? Uh, two up, one down. Okay. Two up, one down. You've got three flaps. And uh, one I won't talk about. <laughs> That's private. <laughs> You've got to adhere to air traffic regulation, mm-hmm. communicate with air traffic control, and complete a number of paper and digital checklists. Right. Which I imagine you're not, you're not doing the paper checklist whilst you're in an emergency, maybe. I don't know. Once the aircraft well, comes- that's why you're in a bloody emergency, yeah. mate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Once the aircraft comes close to the runway, they must accurately judge its height, reduce power, and adjust the rate of descent. Ensuring they land on the correct area of the runway, not slightly to the left. Okay. You know? Yeah, hanging left. Like this. Feel, yeah. Some people's flaps do. Yeah, if you um, two up, one down, you will hang to the left. That's right. I think, oh. yeah, like Bon Scott famously uh, hung to the left. You could only tell because of his tight jeans when he fl- flew a plane. Flew a plane. <laughs> <laughs> what are we? I don't know. I will have a little time out. On the ground, they will use the brakes and reverse thrust to bring the aircraft to a complete stop before the runway ends. And this all happens just within a few minutes. And all of this isn't actually just a hypothetical because there's quite a few incidents of people being forced to land planes that they hadn't previously planned on doing so. Jesus Christ. And many are catalogued on what is officially my fourth favourite Wikipedia page. Oh, my God. Wikipedia.org is a website that catalogues my favourite pages. And we have now have four. That's interesting because I- took four pages. I'm quite familiar with one and two, as in- uh, Inventors killed by their own inventions. That's perfect. That's number one. Number two. Number two is sexually active posts. List of sexually active posts. Number three. I don't know three, and I mm. do now know four is people who've had to land planes. Uh, number three is list of churches in Antarctica, which I found quite interesting. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh. And number four, talk down aircraft landing. I'd go, I'd swap those two, I reckon. <laughs> I think churches this one might Antarctica. be a bit more interesting <laughs> than churches in Antarctica. But- it's your list. Wait, yeah, I just, I'd never known that this page, I just came across it recently, Talk Down Aircraft Landing, and the page begins. A talk down landing may be attempted in the event of the death or incapacitation of an aircraft pilot. It involves a passenger or other unqualified person flying the aircraft to a landing with assistance from radioed instructions, either from the ground or a nearby aircraft. I've ne- I don't think I've ever seen a movie involving a plane where they haven't had to be talked... <laughs> Talk through the landing. There's never been a successful like landing. A Chekhov's cockpit. Yeah. <laughs> if you see a cockpit, yeah. those pilots are going to die. They're going down. And, okay, uh, what about the movie Spy? Hm, gotcha. Ooh, I don't know if I know that one. It's a great movie. Is that I- the only exception? It's a Melissa McCarthy. Ah. Oh. It's very funny. And there's a perfect- Jason Statham's in it. But there's a perfect landing. 
Yeah. By the, a living pilot. No. Well, there you go. <laughs> that's, that's, that's. Oh, you're saying, I thought you were finding an exception. Yeah. You're just giving me another example. So, but the pilots have been. Yeah. Pilots aren't living. Yeah. Mm. So, an, a, another person lands the plane without yeah. yes. help. Matt, Matt's that's saying what I'm that's saying. Every, every move with a plane, that's what happens. That somebody can land a plane. Yeah. Not Matt's the- saying that the pilots, if you, if you see a pilot in a movie, that pilot will not land that plane. In the history of pilots- But somebody else will pi- without exactly. help. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. A, a pilot has never landed a plane. Yeah. Successfully. Obviously, in Die Hard, they crash. Uh, Die Hard 2, that is. Mm-hmm. Kurt Russell in uh, Executive Decision. Great movie. Yeah. I thought you might like that one. It's a really good one. It's <laughs> good fun. What a cast. I haven't seen it. I've just watched the second half of it. Uh, recently, oh David Suchet, I couldn't John believe Lake David Wazama. Suchet. Is the, oh, it, it is a, like a every single person is a star. Wow. Steven Seagal. Oh my god, I, I talked about it on the like was Armorama with Mission Zach. Oh, nice. You got that, and I got one where they spoke Shakespeare in the whole time. Was it Romeo and Juliet? <laughs> Yeah, some shit like that. Yeah, some art house crap. <laughs> no one's ever heard of it. It was all these and they's and fibbly doos and yeah. fibbly doers. Yep. That's Shakespeare. That's Shakespeare for it. Very Shakespearean, I found. Shakespeare? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> to a fault. Yeah. It's like, think of your own thing. Mm. God damn it, man. Yeah. You're a living parody of someone else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There is no record of a talk down landing of a large commercial aircraft. So when everyone says, I could do that, no one has actually done that. Okay, also, there, good. There have, however, been incidents where qualified pilots, traveling as passengers, or flight attendants on commercial flights have taken the co-pilot seat to assist the pilot. I've been on planes twice where they've radioed and asked if there was a doctor on board, which is always an ominous yeah, call. Yeah, that's- I don't like that. Bit scary, but imagine if you heard, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, just wondering, uh, is there a pilot on board? <laughs> no one panic. <laughs> Uh, if there's a doctor as well, that would be great, but <laughs> and probably more pressing as a pilot. What they're hoping more than anything is for a response to come, uh, yes, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm in 7B, uh, uh, I'm heading up yeah. to the uh, cockpit now. Uh. <laughs> I'm just uh, finishing my meal here. Uh, Over. There. <laughs> I chose the pasta and uh, it's not too bad uh, for plain food. Uh. I always choose the pasta. Yeah. Safe. Safe option. Doesn't yeah. safe. So, this exact example happened in December 2013. A United Boeing 737 was travelling from Des Moines, Iowa to Denver, Colorado. Des Moines, Iowa? Bill Bryson's from there. <laughs> Guess someone had to be. <laughs> 30 minutes into the flight, Mike Gongol. What a name. I haven't said this out loud yet. Gongol. <laughs> Mike Gongol. G-O-N-G-O-L. Like Google. Yeah, Mike Gongol, who was travelling with his wife- First noticed something was up when he saw the engines power down to idle and then the aircraft began to descend and bank steeply to the right. And it was only then that he thought, hang on. Something's not right here. <laughs> but it was only an astute pilot that could notice mm. that the engines had stopped and that they were in free fall. They were going around in circles. <laughs> <laughs> we're veering so far to the right, we're just going round and round. This is not, not quite right. right. We were making progress before. Yeah. Now we're doing loop de loops. This is very strange. Side loop de loops. But everyone else is just watching The Incredibles too. They had no idea. Yeah, They're looking out the window. Time. Man, imagine if you ever got through a film like that. Imagine. Is that the one that I kept falling asleep to when you guys? Or was it Cars? Stopped- no, no, it was The Incredibles. It was The Incredibles. Two. So Mike Ongol knew a thing or two about planes because he was an Air Force captain who usually piloted B one B bombers. B one B bombers. <laughs> That's awesome. B one B bombers. Lyndon B. Flying a B-1B bomber. <laughs> Imagine that. Again, I haven't said it out loud. Now I'm saying, is that right? That's ridiculous. B-1B bomber. I'm a B-1B bomber pilot. <laughs> um, let me know if you want me to leave the studio for a bit. <laughs> just just put your hand up and I'll, I'll understand. So, he noticed something was up. First, the address came over the PA. Is there a doctor on board? No one wants to hear that. It's always no. worrying. And then, a few minutes later, is anyone a pilot? Please ring your call button. Mike Gongol's wife said, I think you better ring. <laughs> He's like, oh, we're on a holiday. Yeah. <laughs> I'm off the clock. Yeah, come on. Sucks. But imagine like, here's, if, here's the thing. Let's say I was a nurse or a paramedic, right? And they say, is there a doctor here? I would be like, I'm going to stand back just yeah. a little bit. I'm a here if you need, but I'm not going to ring my bell. You're a hero if you need. Yep. <laughs> I'm not going to ring my Hear call button <laughs> straight away. You know, yeah. just in case, because I don't want to get up there and then like it's it's a, there's a surgeon. I'm like, all right, well you'll be you you've got it. <laughs> Step aside, you know. 
But um, I'm a doctor of philosophy. I'll uh, <laughs> I'll, take, this I'll one. take this one. I'll amputate. All right, here we go. <laughs> I'll uh, amputate with a pen. <laughs> I'm a doctor of podcasting. Uh, I'll take this one. Yeah, uh, and I get up the front and you're a paramedic, and I'm like, technically a doctor. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, overcall, uh, you know, outrank uh, you. Trump. So, nurse slash paramedic with 15 years experience. Yeah. Take a seat. Who's experienced in emergency and That's right. trauma. Let me tell you about the Joe Rogan effect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, so I wonder if he's like, I am, yeah, I am a pilot, but not of these. <laughs> Imagine if I ring the bell and then somebody else goes, oh, good, he's got it, and then- they they actually fly these exact planes. Yeah, but I think that would be a, a relief in a way because the responsibility is taken away from you. Or yeah. you think it would just be embarrassing. It'd be embarrassing. Yeah, they're going. <laughs> I only That's f- such I- a funny thing to be thinking as the <laughs> plane's oh, crashing. Oh god, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> oh, I just oh, I can't I put myself, myself out. out there. I was vulnerable. I put myself out <laughs> yeah. there, and I look. Like, I would I look prefer a fool. to die in a plane crash. <laughs> well, that is what anxiety is sometimes. Yeah. I've had yeah. those thoughts sometimes, like, oh, imagine if you, you know, I just didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> that way I wouldn't have to say hello to this stranger. Oh, this person new, whose name I can't remember. This new job. So yeah. embarrassing. Yeah, will they remember? They probably won't remember me. No. Anyway, that's what I think. Yeah. I'll definitely die of politeness one day. Yep. I will not speak up. I'll kill you because you're so polite. Yeah. <laughs> too polite. I, I said, give me the finger. <laughs> You'll be too nice to a waiter and I'll slit You'll your throat. And I'll say- <laughs> Please, thank oh, you. Too may, far, may, sorry. May I have another, please? <laughs> so, Mike on goal buzzed. He was ushered to the front of the plane and saw that the captain had suffered a massive heart attack. Ugh. He was still alive and being cared for by a nurse, Great. Linda L. Weiss, who was flying home via Denver with her husband and daughter. Linda had also answered the first call for help, but the pilot was obviously in no state to control the plane. But he's had a massive heart attack. Yeah, big one. They're, they're, you, I mean, this is something we talk about because you only ever hear him as being massive. Or yeah, or I guess minor heart attack. But mind. never a mid, never yeah. a midi. Um, Mild heart attack. Aren't there two pilots? Yes, there's, there's the first officer. Yep. Also, someone was called the co-pilot. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, I think, was maybe played that role in um, Flying High. Oh, I was going to say, did I no- not notice him in executive decision? There were so many <laughs> actors in there, I could have missed him. <laughs> Mike Ongo was introduced to the first officer in the cockpit, who was now in charge of the aircraft, and she asked Mark- Oh, hey- a woman. <laughs> Wow. Plot twist. <laughs> Plot twist, a female pilot. She just sometimes, we all have blind spots, and yours is you don't believe women can do anything, and I believe they can. That's not true. I was just pointing out that a woman was a pilot. I think that's rad. That's great. And she said- Well, Dave and I weren't even pointing it out because to us it's just the thing that it can happen and it's not surprising. Yeah, of course you don't think about it. You don't live in a world <laughs> where you're oppressed by your own people because you're men. So, shut the fuck up. Well, I don't like to put labels on things like that. <laughs> Do go on, Dave. She asked Mark, are you a pilot? He recalled to CNN. And was- he said, are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, he said, there was a moment. We had both had about five seconds to size each other up. She was wondering about my level of experience. Was I a Cessna driver or a professional pilot? Because you imagine someone's like, yeah, I fly those little planes yeah, on the yeah. weekend. How? And it took minutes to do that? That's a quick question. She what said, kind of pilot are you? She said five seconds. He said five seconds. <laughs> so, you want to pipe down now? Was, you want to pipe down? I was uh, Mr. Zippy right then. And five <laughs> seconds to yeah, me, it's not like five minutes. You slowed down. <laughs> yeah. He said, I want to make sure she was okay. I had the feeling that she was better than okay. She'd already made the t- decision to turn the plane around towards the nearest airport. So, he's like, all right, she's a very professional. I've told her I'm in the Air Force. We're cool with each other. Let's yeah, do yeah. this. He, first- he's like, no, no, no. Because of some decisions she made, I figured out that she was a professional. It's like, well, she's got the uniform yeah. on, mate, and she's in the cockpit. She is a professional. She's qualified. That's but he's true, like, that's I true. figured out she's all right. I think Unfortunately, though, worry- it's like every job where you want to think they're all great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, doctors and plumbers and everyone else, there's good ones yeah. and there's shit ones. There's some that are te- technically qualified, but should they be <laughs> yeah, doing yeah, the job? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Well, I guess that, like, it's a pretty stressful situation for anyone to be like, okay. Yeah. The pilot is down, possibly dying, my colleague back there. Yeah. But he's like, all right, she's calm, she's cool, this is great. The first officer had never landed at Omaha Airport where they had been redirected, but Mark, during his training, had done so. Great. And he assured the first officer that he could talk her down. This meant he didn't take the controls, but he worked the radio, communicated with air traffic controllers, updating them on the condition of the captain, the passengers in the aircraft. And the plane landed without incident and everyone was fine. Oh, great. The pilot managed to survive his heart attack following the quick thinking actions of the nurse, Linda. After the landing, Mike Gongol quietly slipped out the back door with his family and the incident actually wasn't reported on in the media for six months and then the story started to blow up mm. and all these 
media people started reaching out to him. But on that day, he was just like, I'll leave you to it then. I'll just go hey, get, right. go get my, my carry on and I'll see you later. If you're his wife, you know, because like you know what he does, but you know, you don't get to see it in action. And then you're like, he goes up to the cockpit, the plane lands normally. <laughs> yeah, why did why I'd do you be think, horny as why shit? Why do you think they slipped out so quick? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's check in quick. <laughs> <laughs> that was the hottest thing you've ever done. Oh my god. Other than that time you unloaded the dishwasher. <laughs> Leave the aviators on, though. <laughs> Come in to land this one. <laughs> Big goggle. What was his name? Go- goggle? Gongle. 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 Yeah, right. Wow, that was a shorter episode than I was expecting. Yeah, well, I'm okay with that. It's good for, you know, have some short ones yeah, every now and then. I Don't you so. worry. Don't you worry. I got you. Oh. These are some of the other examples of talk down landings. That's the one that I found. That's the most reported on one where it's like a an airliner. Yeah. Passenger plane. Big yeah. one. But in 2000, Henry George Onholt, his wife and three sons, who were 11, 7, and 2, were flying in the Bahamas, probably sitting in weight order, mm. when their pilot collapsed at the controls. Two-year-old at the front. He's a big boy. <laughs> yeah, a big child. Would they have just been swimming with the piggies? Yeah, probably. That's Bahamas? That's the Bahamas. Wow. And that's what I was doing that day. I was flying down to, to Staniel Key. Hey, Dave, Doing can consumers? you please do an episode about swimming with pigs? Why are there pigs there swimming? I need you to do an episode about it. Okay. I refuse to look it up myself. <laughs> Don't look it up. Mm-hmm. Don't look it up. Mm-hmm. And refuse to just ask you in person. Well, I have asked him, but he refuses to answer when yeah. we're not recording a podcast. That's right. Exactly. That's just because you guys are always feuding. Yeah, yeah exactly. off pod. <laughs> oh my God, I'm not going to give you free information. I hate pod. his guts. Yeah, but on pod? <laughs> on pod, love him. Yeah. Love him to death. What a guy. Love my guts? Love your guts. Love his guts. want to get in there, want to <laughs> jiggle him around. <laughs> oh, Jiggle your guts around. <laughs> so, the family's on board. His wife, his three sons, 11, 7, and 2. The pilot suddenly collapsed at the controls. No one else on board had ever flown a plane before, not even the two-year-old. What? Hmm. What's that kid doing? Doherty, surely that's how he would eat his food. Wow. <laughs> he <laughs> missed yeah. every time. So, actually, not a hungry boy. Yeah. Like, not a, not a big boy, boy, very hungry boy. They were flying in a Piper Cherokee 6, which is considered a high-performance aircraft and requires advanced training to fly. And to make matters worse, they were running out of fuel. Shit. Henry, this is the dad, jumped on the radio to call for help. Fortunately, a plane nearby piloted by a flight instructor, Dan McCulloch, heard his call and was able to instruct Henry on how to land. And they landed safely and Henry and his family were fine. What? Isn't that wild? So, there was a- it just so happens that there was not only another pilot nearby, but a flight instructor. Somebody whose job it is to teach you to fly. So, so fortunate because you're running out of fuel. But in that situation, I cannot imagine how stressed you're going to be. You've got your three young children back there. Yeah. Everyone's, I imagine, freaking out. Yeah. The pilot is, you know, down. Uh, he's probably just happy to get a bit of peace and quiet. Yeah, have a little snooze. Yeah. yeah. Sh- if you don't shut up back there, I'm going to turn this plane around. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to learn how to fly this plane, <laughs> and then I'm going to turn it around. <laughs> the instructor said, I told him, great job. That was his first flight lesson. He needed to find a logbook, and I'd sign him off on his solo. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. That's I nice. wonder if he kept flying after that, if he got the bug. You're like, <laughs> maybe I'm- Really good at this. But I got a knack for it. Do you think that story is going to help uh, 50% of our male listeners who believe that they can fly a plane? Because <laughs> so far, they have been able to. So far. In April 2012, 81-year-old pilot John Collins was flying a twin-engine Cessna 414 in Wisconsin when he lost consciousness. His only lost passenger- Wisconsin. consciousness. <laughs> Don't. The I pun mean. master uh, is, is that here. Anything, well, that's Matt, a pun. That's fantastic. That's not a pun, is it? It's something. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what a word play, something like that. Officially something. Is it a portmanteau? You love those, Bob. Yeah, I love a portmanteau. I think of portmanteaus as being the podcast joke. It's just like you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> podcasts they just sit around and they go. <laughs> just wait for oh, two words that sound similar. Mush these words together. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's got to be the worst kind of comedy, but. Bit of fun. <laughs> exactly. It's a freebie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, am I going to leave this freebie exactly, there? Exactly. <laughs> Low-hanging fruit is still fruit, guys. Exactly. We've, got, we've got to fill the minute <laughs> somehow. How, do I, how, do, how else do I get my fructose in my diet? <laughs> exactly. Do you so, want me to climb up the tree and get some of that high-hanging fruit? So, oh. <laughs> 81-year-old John Collins, he's flying. He's passed out. His only passenger was his 80-year-old wife, Helen Collins who herself was very frail, having undergone two open-heart surgeries quite recently. Why the fuck are they flying? <laughs> no, it's, it's so, it's so Why crazy. Why are you flying? It's so crazy. Her only experience 
with flying was having piloted a single engine aircraft over three decades earlier. Yeah, uh, but it's like forget. riding a bike. Yeah. But this is a much, this is a twin engine. So it's a bit more complicated, and now she's eighty and very frail. Why the fuck are they in the plane? <laughs> I'm not blaming them. Yeah, I think they were they were going to meet up with their son. It cool, is, drive that, a car. Who was also a pilot, and he said, "I can fly you" or something like that. And the the dad said, "Oh no, I'll just do this short flight." Yeah, and then and then from there on, you can fly the rest of the way. It's interesting how Jess was just talking about being oppressed, and now she's oppressing the elderly. So <laughs> just want to put that on the record. It's interesting. That's all I'm saying. I'm not. I'm not saying which way it's interesting. I'm not making any judgments. I'm just putting that out there and letting the listeners make their own mind up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm with Jess on this one. Why would you fly the plane? You're flying 81 a plane. years old. She you just was- had open heart surgery. Why are you flying a plane? You kids don't understand. Old people are still people. Just. <laughs> I would be saying that about a 30-year-old who'd had open heart surgery recently. I'd be saying, why are you flying a plane? Hmm, that's interesting. That's true. But no, so it was her husband. It's more about the, the conditions. But it's the, the wife's now, at, you know, the only one consciousness. Yeah, but when it's just two of you, you have to have the thought of if something happens to me. Yeah. Who's going to fly the plane? You have to have that thought. So, she jumped on the radio. She was able to contact air traffic controllers and a pilot of a shadow aircraft then provided instruction. So, they started flying near them. Helen circled the airport for an hour and a half, making several attempts to line up with the runway. She was just having a great time by the sounds of it. (laughs) Well, with the engines spluttering from lack of fuel, she knew she had only one final attempt. Before the engines were going to oh, cut Oh, this out. is when, but this is when she turns on. It was make or break. What's it? Joan Collins, was it? Helen Collins. Helen Collins. Very close to helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> Again, you see words that sound similar, so yeah. you make a comment about them. <laughs> yeah. That's how easy it is. <laughs> I think this is going to be like that, um, that Sex Pistols show where everyone started a band afterwards. <laughs> Everyone's going to start a podcast. I could do that. <laughs> I can merge words together. Oh, it's that easy. It's that easy. Oh, my God. Which is really fun to think of people out there going, do you think I could do a podcast? <laughs> yeah. Just record it in your phone. It's, it is very easy to do. Similar to playing punk music. And landing a plane, apparently. So, she had one final attempt. It was make or break. Earlier, she had said to her, her instructors, don't you guys have faith in me? I can do this. But moments before landing, she said- I don't think I can do this. <laughs> She'd lost confidence after several attempts. Well, that's what happens when you're around people who are, uh, suck your confidence away. True. Fortunately, she was able to crash land the plane. Which is why it was so good she lost all the fuel, right? That is good. Yeah, yeah, less fuel on board, less less flammable liquid without serious injury. Okay. She was okay. Her son, Richard, told ABC News- I can't even tell her how to run a computer, let alone <laughs> land a plane. Everybody is so proud of her. That's awesome. Yeah. It just she needed. It's sort of yeah. I can't teach my mum anything about a phone. You need a you need a, a a level of separation. Yes. Other people could instruct Helen on how to land a plane, mm. but her son wouldn't have been. He would able have, to. He'd be getting frustrated. Yeah, Mama. Mum, please, please. Mum, Helen Copter. Du- please, <laughs> please. <laughs> Double click. Click it twice. That means click it twice. <laughs> no, <laughs> like quickly together. Like tip, tip, not one, and then wait five seconds no, no, and again. No, the one on the left hand side. I know there's two buttons. Oh my god. <laughs> the, the, uh, one of the rare, r- genuinely good ads. I think there's two that's ever been. The one with Wayne Hope as the chef uh, <laughs> using a blender to make soup, and the other one was a son, an adult son, telling his elderly mother about um, setting up call waiting. And um, do you know this ad? No, and she's, he, he's like, all right, we've set it up. Now I'm going to call the phone or setting up an answering service. I'm going to call the phone, let it ring, and we'll see if it gets through. <laughs> so he's phone, and she goes, oh, the phone, <laughs> and picks it up and answers it. <laughs> That's good stuff. <laughs> and I think it happens like three times. That's fun. That's, good. It's, that's basically the uh, Mr. Thompson joke from The Simpsons. <laughs> I think he's talking it's exactly to you. that joke. I wonder what came first. Yeah, great question. Do you think the Simpsons are ripping off Australian <laughs> phone ads? I think they could be. I will say there is some sad news, and that is her husband John didn't survive. Oh no, he had a heart attack. I suppose she'd been up flying around for like an hour and a half. Oh Jesus! Had, you know, hadn't got him to hospital quickly. But Dave, Dave, please don't put that on her. Oh no, I'm not putting that on her. Mm. I did. She actually said in an interview that she was. She was like, as soon as he had the big heart attack, I knew. Yeah, but like you know. Sadly. Oh. So, that's that's, uh, that's sad. 
In October 2013, a 77-year-old, these old pilots, Englishman John Wildly, who had served in the Royal Air Force but not as a pilot, controlled a plane for over an hour and landed it safely in the dark after the pilot of the plane he was on also died at the control. But he had been in the Air Force. Yes. He'd been around it. Sometimes I think I'd be an okay hairdresser because I've watched my <laughs> sister-in-law work a lot. Like, she's cut my hair a lot and I've watched her and I'm like, I can do it. Yeah, you do that angled thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, they do that thing where yeah. they sort of go- chip, 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 chip. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I think I could do it. I think I could give it a go. You ask what, they're well. doing, ask what they're doing on the weekend, ask how yeah. their family yep, is. I can do that. Easy. My brother's a carpenter. I reckon I could build a house. Really? Good one. Yeah, yeah you could probably do a podcast. Water on an angle. Chip, 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 chip. Yeah, just- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's not just blunt. Yeah, you, you don't, don't want blunt. You in, don't want in wood. yeah, really <laughs> straight edges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, that yeah. stands out. So yeah, I get that. He's in the air force. Yeah, and he, he's been around and love. He's absorbed yeah. it. He was again instructed via the radio. Okay, but sometimes you're all on your own. Ugh. And the final and main story I want to share is, to be honest, a whole different ball game to these other stories. Uh, this is uh, it's cricket. <laughs> Uh, okay, it's cards on the table. Here, I had a cricket story. There wasn't enough word count, so I padded it out <laughs> with my fourth favourite Wikipedia page, Soon. Are we having fun or not? Now, this one's been suggested by Stephen Groom from Wakefield in Yorkshire, who suggested this when he wrote, anyone can suggest a topic at any time at dogoonpod.com, and then you can tell us why we should do the topic. And he wrote, this story takes place in 1966, which I believe is the year Aussie Jack Brabham won the Formula One World Championship. Wow. Perhaps the only known sporting achievement that year. And that's uh, actually not true. I looked it up. Chicago Bulls performed that year. Other stuff happened in sport. John Pullman beat Fred Davis 5-2 in matches at the World Snooker Championships. There was one other sporting event in 1960. Wow. Did you know that? I didn't know that, no. So, a big year for sport, but that's a great not fact. that big. Only two, two sporting events. That's a great no, fact no, no, about no, no. 1966. No, yeah. anyway, Sanctuary Football Club also uh, won but, that but, but, but let's just continue there, Dave. <laughs> not sure we have time to <laughs> one only just put my I finger on Matt's lips. Oh, you wanted me to give you a little kiss? I thought you might have had a sore on your finger. Kiss you better. Had a little cut. Kiss you better. I thought you might be sort of trying trying to trim his moustache with the scissors. <laughs> yeah. I know, reckon I could. <laughs> <laughs> Would you trust me to cut your hair? Yeah, of course. Oh, this. I mean, I'm sort of give a shit about my hair. <laughs> Dave is the guy you want to ask the Your question to. Dave as low has, as mine. I, love I it. don't think Dave ever has a single hair out of place. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, you can have a go. You can't stuff it up really. It's short back and sides, a little bit off the top. Yeah. It's a, I love Jimmy Barnes uh, talking about his the the chisel bass player in an interview once. He said, oh, everyone, he was always standing at the front, not a single hair out of place. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mention his bass playing or he's just like- No, nah, it's a good hair. Jeez, he had good hair. Great hair. Phil Smalls, big yeah. Phil Smalls. We, we, fired, we hired him because of his hair. <laughs> oh. the great, this is a- pa- Stephen Groom, I'm pretty sure that's a powerful uh, do go on listening- Family, the grooms. I think there's multiple grooms. Sarah Groom. Well, I, I don't. You know, yes. That's t- there's another one. Name, name more. Uh, Phil Groom. Phil Groom. Yep. Jackie Groom. Jackie Groom. Yep. Greg Groom. Yeah, Greg Groom. Groom Groom. <laughs> Greg Groom is <laughs> so good. Greg Groom. <laughs> Greg Groom. Greg Groom. You guys got enough Greg Groom back there? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's one. That's a yeah. book. That's, a, that's what we're it talking about. Great like groom. It sounds like leg groom. There's something in that. Great <laughs> <laughs> groom. Back it's, there. And it's such a funny. It's such a cute and funny thing we all say. As yeah. soon as somebody's in the back seat, you got you got enough leg room back there. Yeah. I can make the seat forward. It's fine. Honestly, I don't think I've ever. I've asked that question a lot. No yeah. one has ever said, actually, Actually, could you yeah. move forward? But everyone's like, even if their knees are touching their eyebrows, oh, they're yeah. like, I'm good. I'm fine. Like, this is fine. Oh, I'm oh, it's roomy oh, back so here. Oh, it's roomy back here. I can't, micro. can't wait to have a Greg in the back seat. <laughs> Got enough Greg room back there? <laughs> that is good. That's going to be a great moment. That's good stuff. Someone's going to get to do that today. Someone's at home going, my son's <gasps> name's Greg. Get, Greg, get, in, the get in the car. Get Greg, in the car. Get in the car. No, in the back seat. <laughs> Greg, quick. <laughs> quick. <laughs> grabbing him out of bed. They're listening in the middle of the night. Greg, get out of, get out of get bed. Get in the car. It's an emergency. Get in the car. Not the front seat. <laughs> no. Yeah. Get in the back. Yelling. <laughs> oh, what's Greg's, going Greg, on? Greg's crying. Hey, Greg. You got enough Greg Groom back there? <laughs> what? All right. <laughs> What's that was going fun. On? Go back to bed. Greg, go to your room. We go got to your it. room. Why are you up, young it. man? Greg it's Groom. It's past your bedtime, young man. Ah, Greg Groom. Greg Groom. <laughs> That's probably my favourite moment of the show. <laughs> All right. Well, ever. <laughs> jokes aside. This is the main part of the topic. Oh, this is yeah. the, the bit that if you're looking at the title of the topic, that's what this is. Okay. The story. Oh, so some people are going, 
45 fucking minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, it's all plane related, so okay. it's, it's, it, it is on topic. Let me introduce you to Walter Taffy Holden. Oof. Who was an engineer branch officer in the UK's Royal Air Force. He had joined the RAF, the RAF, as an apprentice in 1943 when he was only 16 years old and gained a cadetship to university. He studied mechanical engineering and learned to fly with the University Air Squadron, flying Tiger Moths, which are 1930s biplanes. You know, you imagine those sort of war- wartime planes. They, yeah. They look a lot like that. Is that like the the Red Baron sort of stuff? Yeah, maybe because this is post-World War One. I feel like my dad might have gone for a joyride in a, in right. a tiger moth. But like, you know, often if you see people going for a, a, you know, a joyride on the weekend in like an old school plane, that that kind of thing. Tiger moth are pretty yeah, popular. I reckon he might oh, have. Wait, dad, are, you saying, <laughs> are you saying that in one of these two-seater planes, the pilot had a heart attack? That would be tricky. No, no, no. So you got to climb over. You could probably have to pull the body out and just let it go. <laughs> They're alive, but I need to fly the Sorry, plane. Sorry, mate. Sorry. I'm going to have to jettison you and then you jump in and, man, if that's what this story is going to be and if it's anything less than that, <laughs> it's going to be pretty dull. But if it's that, that's going to be fantastic. <laughs> no, it's even better. Whoa. Biplanes, they're operated by the Royal Air Force as a primary trainer aircraft because they're easy to learn in. So that's what he that's what he flew when he was very young, sort of like a a, a Getz or a a Jazz, you know, yeah, yeah. small, compact, easy to learn. Exactly, in. chuck it into drive. You know, how can you go? You're wrong? not chucking the learner in the Range Rover, you know. No, too big, too big. Yeah, too much risk. Yeah. After uni, he chose to qualify as an engineer rather than go down the professional flying career. But at the time, it was thought it was a good idea for his engineering knowledge if he got his wings. That is, became a qualified pilot. In the hope he could more easily see the pilot's point of view in aircraft maintenance matters. I mean, I'd, I'd prefer a mechanic who has a driver's license. Exactly. They understand it a lot better. Personally. Yeah. Exactly. Because then they, they're not like, what's this do? And I'm like, that's the steering wheel. Yeah. What do you mean? You know? Can you put it to me in plain terms? <laughs> I don't know. The no? steering stick? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I don't. I can't fly a plane. And they're like, you can't fly a plane? <laughs> yeah. But you think you can get a car serviced? It's very confusing. I hate going to the mechanic. He continued to learn on mostly single-engine aircrafts. Notably, his only jet aircraft experience was as a passenger. Never same. Got to- yeah. Same. Yeah, same, actually, now that you mention it. Yeah. I haven't even been a, a steward. <laughs> no. You've been yeah. a steward, but not a steward. I've been a, I've been a, <laughs> yeah, I've been a flight steward. You've been a steward on a plane, for yeah. sure. It's my favourite flight steward. <laughs> Is that fun? Do you like that? <laughs> That's good. We've done it again. Yeah. Stuart's just- God. I really shouldn't have explained it because now everyone's going to be like going, oh, that's all they do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every four minutes someone goes, huh? huh? Yeah. We'll just watch our Patreon numbers drop. <laughs> it is good though. At free. At free. <laughs> so, Taffy started his engineering career and one of his postings was as the chief officer of a civilian manned aircraft storage unit where he prepared for dispatch uh, large aircraft Canberra bombers. Meteor Jet Fighters, and English Electric Lightnings. So, very big, very complicated Air Force planes. Mm. In 1966, the year that uh, Jack Brabham won his one, only man to win a Formula One World Championship in his own car. <laughs> there you go. Wow. Which sounds like he drove his Hyundai Gets on the yeah. Yeah, But yeah, it was yeah. just his team. It's just his Corolla. Yeah. <laughs> it was a hybrid too. It's great. He rocks the fuel up. economy is fantastic. He rocks up in his own car. <laughs> Jack, what the fuck is that? That's how good he was. Yeah. That's how good he was. <laughs> That's a great name as well, Jack Brabham. Jack Brabham. <laughs> well, I didn't say it right, but Jack, Jack Brabham. <laughs> <laughs> what me- a fantastic name, Jack Brabham. Jack Brabham. That's a fantastic name. Very hard to say. <laughs> but a beautiful name if you can ever <laughs> land <laughs> it. Like a, like a, like a that, Love that's it. my thing. I can't. I need someone to talk me through landing the pronunciation of a name. Yeah. I've like got someone on the phone. All right, so it starts with Jack. <laughs> Jack. J- okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Oh, Jack. <laughs> it's surely there's someone else here. No, there's no one else here, man. <laughs> the linguist has passed out. We need you. We to need say you, say you to say a name. <laughs> Jack. Jack. Yes, perfect. Say it. Jack. Coming in for landing. Jack. Brabham. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no he's crashed all There will be no survivors. <laughs> this one is dead. <laughs> <laughs> so, in 1966, Taffy Holden was in command of number 33 maintenance unit RAF at RAF Lynham, which was in the process of closing down. Basically, they had one last job. Love it. Top Gun Maverick. He had a pilot. 
You had a pile on your stuff? It's not like that. <laughs> I was like, spoilers. I haven't seen it. But haven't you? No. Can I watch it with you? Sure. I, can, I, I haven't seen it either. Oh, my God. Can we watch it? Yeah, sure. Yes. I loved it. Dave does hate Tom Cruise. You'll love this. Oh, I, yeah. but I didn't like the first one. Apparently, this is a lot better. Yeah, it's pretty good. Maverick's all better. We can set it up. Glenn the- Powell's in it. He's really of the moment. Can we set it up downstairs on the big screen? Yeah, watch on the big screen downstairs. <sighs> My dream. Evan. <laughs> Evan from Super Bowl. He's yeah. listening. He's listening. He's always he's listening. listening. So he's in charge. He's like the he's in charge of all the engineering and the maintenance. But he had a pilot on his staff that flew the Canberra and Meteor planes. But this pilot wasn't qualified to fly the Lightnings, which are incredible pieces pieces of machinery, and at the time were absolute cutting edge technology. Just letting everyone know that I'm letting it go that you said pieces. <laughs> well, I said it twice so that AJ could edit it out. <laughs> Okay, well, he can edit that out as well. He can't now. Well, he can. He's that good. <laughs> he's that good. He can good. edit it out and in. Yeah. yeah. He's that good. He's that good. <laughs> I double D to edit it out, but you can't. Got him. <laughs> Lightnings were interceptor planes, which are a type of fighter aircraft designed specifically for the defensive interception role against an attacking enemy aircraft, particularly bombers and reconnaissance planes. They also look badass. Cool. What's it called again? A uh, a lightning. Light. Yeah. I mean, it's got a badass name. Jess, just Google lightning. You'll see a photo <laughs> of it. It's actually pretty cool. They don't even look like planes. They sort of look like, you know, squiggles. Images. Wow. That's a plane? It? No, I've Googled lightning. Oh, great. Lightning jet? <laughs> I was doing a, um, a, a visual joke for a podcast, and that is always funny. <laughs> okay, great. They do look pretty badass. It's, they're called e- or English Electric Lightning is the full title. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I like funny that. Looking things. Yeah. Oh, it's funny things. Wait, is the Lockhead Martin? I reckon I had a toy of a Transformer mm. one of these as a kid. No, the, no, the Lockheed. No, that's a different one. It's Eng- a Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning Two. No, no, that's a different one. We, oh. you type in English Electric Lightning. Yeah, there it is. Got, oh, got a that, funny look. It looks nose. like maybe yeah, Homer the- Simpson designed it. And if, if you look, yes, it do does. Do you think it's nose? And I'm sorry to go here, but do you think it's a, like it looks a little bit like a penis? <laughs> um, got questions about the penises you've seen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, very pointy, very pointy tip. Yeah. Huge uh, gap between the what I assume you think is the foreskin and the yeah. <laughs> and the knob. I said sorry for going there. Everyone I did has to look at it. Now. I did apologize. An interesting thing about it: it has a its engine is maybe more like a dog dick. Yes, it I looks can like say a that. red rocket. It's a red rocket. Okay, it's yes. a it's a grey rocket. You're absolutely right. That's the kind of penis I've seen. <laughs> and if you if people at home are looking, if you look at the the engine on the back is quite unique apparently because it's two stacked on top of each other. Ah. Oh. Oh. So yeah, it's a it's a it's a cool looking thing. It looks pretty. I'm looking badass. at it from above. That looks cool. Yeah, they're they're cool. I'll Flying like, V. We'll put this on Instagram. I imagine the the cover image that we use when we say, "Hey, this is the episode." Will be a photo of the plane. So so uh, you can look it up on Instagram right now. You know that logo, the blue circle with a white circle inside it and a red dot in the middle. Is that like a an RAF logo or something? Because it just looks like. Don't you reckon? Jess, yes, that just looks like a. Bombing target. It's like on. <laughs> yeah. Look, if you want to explode these wings, this is where I'd aim it. Yeah, yeah. That, that is that's how ro- cocky they are. The Royal Air Force logo is a target. Yeah, but you can't hit right here. Good fucking luck. Good fucking luck, Governor. Hitler. <laughs> Good luck, Hitler. <laughs> Good luck, Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> so, because the they were used defensively, they needed to be able to take off extremely quickly to be able to intercept enemies. Because back when they, you know. A bomber comes into town, you go, holy shit, it's going to drop a bomb. We're going to take it out before it gets here. So, these things take off very quickly. Wiki writes, the Lightning has an exceptional rate of climb, ceiling, and speed. Pilots have described it as being saddled to a skyrocket. Another mechanic described it as a jet engine with a jockey on top. Wow. Oh, so it's, they, I like that they're putting it in horse terms <laughs> yes. so we can all understand. Yeah. Horses. We all know horses. Yeah. We don't know planes. We know horses. We know saddles. We know jockeys. Yeah. Now- <laughs> How do you how do you put those into these analogies? <laughs> They're the Maccabi diva of the sky. Oh, okay, yeah, it's okay. Okay, okay. Thank Owned you. Owned by a a fish billionaire <laughs> yeah, that's right. who's named it after three of his assistants: Murph for like Marie, probably Kai for Kylie, Di for Diane, and Va for Vanessa, or whatever it was. Is that right? Something know. like that. Maccabi diva. I'm I'm stuck on fish millionaire. <laughs> How'd that fish get all that money? <laughs> 
<laughs> He's a fish millionaire. How the fish get all that money? <laughs> he pops out of the water with a top hat and a monocle. Hello. <laughs> he did have a mallet, I'm pretty sure. So. <gasps> That's a type of fish. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. He was a double fish. <laughs> he oh was a fish God. with a fish head <laughs> cut. Fish head cut. Fish head cut. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, no, nah, it's yeah. It's a nightmare at it. It this is, one. yep, yeah, 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 yeah. tedious. Just want to say again on the record, uh, everything that makes it in the show is AJ's choice. Yes, we're throwing shit against the wall. AJ the stuff that doesn't sticks. Stick, and if he chooses it, that's him saying this is worth your time. Yeah, we don't think any of it is. No, yeah, God, it was up to. Remember when we edited the episodes and they went for thirty-eight seconds? Yeah, yeah, and that was all just that the was ads. It. At free Patreon. <laughs> so, they take off very quickly yeah. and they are capable of supersonic speeds hitting Mark II, that is twice the speed of sound, and had a top speed of 1,500 miles per hour or 2,400 kilometres, meaning they are faster than a Concorde. Wow. Whoa. Very quick. And they get there, like, within a minute. Very, very quick. Wow. Lightning like, like quick. Straight up. And they, they take off. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And they take off basically straight up. I hate that. It's like being saddled to a rocket, if you can picture Oh, that. okay. Now I understand. Uh, as I've a jockey, been in a wearing seaplane. Wearing jockey colours. <laughs> I've been in a seaplane that went straight up. Oh, I'd never been in a seaplane. Was that terrifying? Yeah, I hated it. Everybody what? else was like, woo, this what? is so fun. And I was like, Bleh. What was scarier, the takeoff or the landing? Oh, uh, I don't. I think that was okay. It was just the, the straight up oh, bit okay. I didn't like. I think the rest was okay. I don't remember. I think I probably blacked out. Who was the pilot? Baloo? Baloo. Well, hmm. oh, there you go. I don't get it. Sometimes I just find it easier to just uh, agree Matt, with remember him. Remember Matt re- referenced that TV show we never heard of, but a lot of our listeners Oh, that's new. right. Baloo Tailspin. was a- Tailspin. Yes. Baloo was a pilot. It was this weird spinoff where Baloo, the bear from the Jungle Book, yep. was now a pilot. Yeah. It just <laughs> it, makes sense. It yeah. makes sense. Much like a fish millionaire, you know, <laughs> a, a bear pilot. Yeah, it could be anything. Similar. Okay, I've figured out our Patreon game for later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, animal job title. <laughs> that's, that's sizzle. Stay tuned. So, cut back to 1966 and Taffy Holden was working on a troublesome lightning, model number XM135. Ah, yes, the XM135. Do you remember it? Remember it well. A little smart ass of a unit, wouldn't get moving when it needed to. <sighs> you Stubborn. Know? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Dave, can I just say, uh, people on Patreon- won't have realised this, but there was just an ad. But because you're on the ad-free feed, you didn't notice. So I'm just letting you know that's what you're getting. Yeah. You didn't get an ad. <laughs> and the people who got an ad, you knew you had an ad. So I, you don't have to worry about what I just said. Exactly. It's oh, cool, isn't it? <laughs> We're very excited about this whole new thing. Ad-free feed. We're the first to do it. <laughs> first ever. It's been on our list of things to do for so long, and we realised last week that you just- You could just do just it. It's do not it. hard it's, at all. There sec- was no planning involved. Nah, it was just like, should we do it? Yeah, okay. Just sec- Done. Just a second upload. Takes so, four sorry minutes. about that. Sorry. We're doing it now. Making up for lost time. And we actually needed someone to phone in and, and talk us through it, though. Yeah. And then you drag the file across. Oh, oh what do you mean? <laughs> Jack, blah, blah, blah. Oh, no. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Actually deleted our Patreon, so, yeah. So, it's 1966 and the unit's about to be shut down. Like I said, they've got basically one last job. This is the last plane, this troublesome lightning that they're working on, so clock's ticking on the job. They've got to get it back in the air so they can wrap wrap everything up and move on to the, you know their next places of employment. Taffy was tasked with getting it back on track, but each time it was being flight tested, the pilot found that on the initial few metres of takeoff on the runway, the inverter that supplies power to the primary flight instruments, quite important, would cut out and a standby inverter would have to cut in. Not great when the whole aim of the plane is to quickly take off mm. when it sort of has to go to auxiliary power or whatever. Right. Remember, Taffy didn't have a pilot that was qualified to immediately test fly this type of plane on his staff. So whenever he wanted to check to see if they'd been able to fix the problem, he had to basically order in a pilot. Yeah. A process that would take 24 to 48 hours. A mail order pilot. Exactly. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> is that something? I think so. Is it a bit of fun? Is that I think the it's thing a it bit is? of fun. We'll see what AJ thinks. <laughs> <laughs> and it was an annoying process because over a period of weeks, Taffy and his team tried to get it back online. And every time they thought they'd finally solved the problem and everything seemed to be working, the test pilot would come out, which is a big rigmarole. Like I said, they've got to wait two days. This guy comes out and they'd find that the problem only presented itself when the plane was taxiing for takeoff, which is something they don't test when, yeah. when it's in the shed. Yeah, how can you test it? Exactly. And they, yeah. every time they think, we got it, no worries, bring him in, have a go, and he'd immediately go, it's not working, and they'd have to go straight back to, uh, to the drawing board. 
After a few tests, the test pilot had had enough and refused to fly until a more positive explanation could be determined. Because I guess he's like, (laughs) yeah, and you're a test pilot, mate. It's your job. But like, but they're trying to fix a thing that only, you can only tell if it's been fixed or not when it's piloted. And that's your job. That's true. I guess that- I'm not coming out here again. Need a test test pilot. (laughs) I guess the theory is- that like okay, this problem presents itself when it's on the on the runway. But what if you fix that bit and then I get in the air and then it cuts out? Yeah. What do I do then? And you have no idea why it's happening. Yeah. I want to know a bit more. Yeah. yeah. With time pressure mounting to get the plane back operational and no other pilot available for more than a week, they had to think outside the box. It was suggested that as he was technically a qualified pilot, Taffy might be able to undertake the tests himself. Oh no. He wasn't allowed to fly the plane. But technically, he didn't need to fly it. He only needed to taxi down the runway 30 or 40 metres and then stop because that was when the problem was showing itself. So, he didn't need to actually take How off. How fast are you going when you're taxiing? Not that fast. You're basically driving a big exactly, car. Exactly. It's a big car. Have Whoa. you ever been in a New York taxi? Those guys fly. <laughs> Do they? Yeah. Wow. They're reckless. I haven't. No. Oh, I haven't either. I've just seen them on, on like sitcoms. I'm excited to, to try yeah. when I go to New York later this year. Yellow cab. Oh, you could you could walk somewhere and yell at people. I'm walking in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I could also go, <whistles> taxi. Yeah, yeah. And that's all of their culture. Yeah, yeah. yeah and a bagel. Good. And then I'm done. Oh, you're going to have a New York bagel? Probably. You could have a New York slice. Yeah, I could have a New York slice. Okay, there's actually a fair few things I need to you fit go to, in on You the go street. to one, like an underground comedy club. Oh, oh my God. Okay. You go to Caroline's. Oh, my God. i got quite a list going. You I thought I was going to be like one, might be one day in and out. I could get it all done. No, you're going to have at so least- a fair two, bit to do in New York. Two yeah, days. Should, Shit. I must insist you add uh, Mr. Sheffield's house to the <gasps> list. The Is name. that in New York? Yes, yeah, right near Central Park. Is it really? Because yes. she's from Flushing, Queens. Yes. yes. And the, and the father saw more. Oh, yes. <laughs> Central Park. That's right. Did you know? I think I've talked about this before. I've got the, a TV that t- comes with digital TV yeah. channels. Streaming Baywatch. Stuff. Baywatch. Mythbusters. There's, an, there's two new ones I've noticed. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire 24-7, including American and That's English versions? Wow. Right. Like, and sometimes there's an episode with Jimmy Kimmel where he hosted one a year ago, and then there'll be one with the English guy. I think his name's Chris Tarrant from, like, 1999. Chris Tarrant. Yeah, that's right. So, that's fun. Because so, every time you turn the TV on, they start before you, you pick binge or stand yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, that pops up. I always get one question in, and then I watch something. But then that's been overtaken because there is 24-7- No. The Nanny. Yeah. Wow. The Nanny. And last night- as we turned the TV on to watch the show, the theme song started exactly, <gasps> and we were able to sing along. And da, man, da, 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 it was fun. Da, da, da. You'd have a you. I think you would probably um, relate a lot to that show because you're also fine. <laughs> yeah, yes. You're Miss yeah. Fine. You're yeah. Thank you. You're Master Fine. Master Fine. And I also am wearing red when everyone else is wearing tan. Yeah. Tan. <laughs> um, how did we get onto this? Uh, New, York, New, York, New York taxi. Taxi's taxi. going slow. Yeah, so it will take more than oh, a few. Yes, and what I was does. what I was going to say is he's basically driving a big car. A big car. Right? And then I thought, what's a big car? A tank. I would love a chance to drive a tank. That would be really fun. Wouldn't that be so fun? Do you think you could land a tank? I reckon I could land a tank. Um, if the A team is anything to go by where they st- they steer a tank by firing um, firing from the tank. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty sick. They steer by firing. It. Yeah. So yeah, like it. The, the, oh, the sorry, out. sorry, sorry, sorry. The the tank is falling from the sky. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it, it had been a little detail there. Picked, it, the tank came out of a big plane, and then as they fall through the sky, they are shooting in one direction to oh make the pla- the tank go another. It's I think incredible. That, that does stack up, I think. And I think if scientists are listening, they would agree. They'd, they'd be like, yeah, duh. Was yeah. Mr. T must have been terrified. He hates flying. He hated oh it. My yeah, gosh. yeah, he he that to trick him into flying. Watch watch the A-Team. That's the film version you're That's talking about. That's the film version with Liam Neeson okay. and Bradley Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> what a combo. All right. <laughs> that was for Liam Neeson. <laughs> does Mr. T play Mr. T? No. B.A. Baruckers? Bear Baracus plays Mr. T. No, that's Mr. T plays Bear Baracus in the original movie. Yeah. Who played him in there? It's funny to have someone else playing Mr. T. But he was- it, Yeah, it's also funny that BJ Baracus was basically Mr. T though, right? Yeah. He Is he- who, uh, does Quinton Mi- Jackson played B.A. Baracus in the that's movie. That's it. Does, does Mr. T pity the fool or does B.A. Baracus pity the fool? Ooh. Oh, I feel maybe both. Okay. 
Yeah. Maybe taking the catchphrase with him. Anyway, I'm so sorry. So, all he has to do is taxi. Taxi down the runway and he's a qualified pilot. And technically, pilot. he can do that. Yes, technically. He doesn't have to take off. He's got his taxi license. He's got exactly. his taxi license. Taffy had only once ever sat in the cockpit of a supersonic jet and he had no idea how to start its two Rolls-Royce Avon engines, so the foreman had to give him a five-minute crash course. Foreman sure. had to give him a five-minute. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This sh- is this our best ever? I think it might be. <laughs> Even I agree that was good. <laughs> that was good stuff. Sometimes you've got to take off your own hat. <laughs> I've been sitting here struggling a bit today, feeling a bit nauseous. Right? A few times I've been like, am I going to throw up? But it's still our best episode we've ever done. <laughs> you throw up because of our jokes. Of- no. Or our- Sorry, our attempts at humour. Nah. Our successful attempts. Successful attempts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, the way the lightning reached such fast speeds was because of afterburner, also known as reheat in England. I spoke about this on the Concord episode. Is it like NOS? But yeah, yeah, kind of. You, you, you push a button or hit a lever and it kicks it into overdrive. This is when raw fuel is introduced into the exhaust in order to greatly increase thrust. I reckon rockets have that, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. So that makes sense. It's like a rocket. Yeah, it's like a small rocket. Yep. Like a red rocket. Jess already said that before. <gasps> yeah. That's why. That's, That's why. why they made it. It's yeah. a design. It's on purpose. Yeah. It's supposed to look like a red rocket. Uh, the big advantage of an afterburner is that you can significantly increase the thrust of the engine without adding much weight or complexity to it. The foreman giving Taffy the five-minute demo joked that he would not be needing reheat, but explained that reheat is turned on when the throttle lever is pushed forward past a certain point. It turns on and then locks in place and can only be turned off by feeling for a key behind the throttle. But of course, when you're only traveling 30 or 40 meters on the ground, why would you need to turn on the reheat? (laughs) They had a little laugh about that. Sure. Yeah. But they probably found it even funnier. Yeah. They thought it was a bit of fun. Like, oh, man, you're not going to need reheat. Why would you need that? You're only traveling 30 meters. Yeah. It's a bit like scientists doing like science jokes or whatever. And you're like, okay. But they're really laughing yeah, they and you're like, it. okay. I guess it's their life. And yeah, they listen to us and go, fuck, they're tedious yeah. <laughs> and stupid. And we go, yeah, fair enough. Fair call. But this is our best episode we've ever done. <laughs> In terms of jokes, not content. <laughs> yeah, this report's been dog shit. So boring. But <laughs> the jokes- It's about to get more exciting. <laughs> if we let you speak, it will get fun. Yeah, that's right. Let me- I'm kidding. It's been great. I'm You're amazing. To- I love you so much. Thank Never you. leave us again. Thank you so much. So the plane was towed out to an unused runway and Taffy was strapped into the seat in the cockpit. But he wasn't wearing the usual helmet and oxygen mask that a pilot would usually use. Again, why would he why need Why would he that? need to? He's just driving the car. Exactly. It sounds like- you're burning up to him accidentally flown into the sky. <laughs> Surely not. <laughs> Surely not. <laughs> Eddie, well, you can't accidentally fly. <laughs> <laughs> Again, why would you need rain? Why would he need rain? He doesn't need rain. He doesn't need the oxygen mask because he's not going anywhere. This this is the ground, mate. You can't accidentally fly. <laughs> you can't fly a fucking jet by accident. That'd no. be insane. Whoa, panic. I'm oh, panic. panic. Whoops. I should say, also, the oxygen mask contains the radio, so to communicate with the outside, the glass canopy was removed from the plane, like in Top Gun. You know how they sit in that thing with the thing? That was taken off, so he could yell messages to a Land Rover stationed next to it, and another person inside would relay the messages on a radio between the lightning plane and the base. So, he's, like, yelling out stuff like, yeah, all good, I'm testing it and turning it on now, and then they'd go, he's turning it on now, he's all good. Have they taken it off or it's just open? No, they've taken it off completely. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, he's open. Yeah. Couldn't compl- just leave it open. Like, you yeah. couldn't just wind down a window, could you, <laughs> in a car? You have they, to take out the door. They absolutely took it off. Do, do they not normally have just a radio for the pilot to, to communicate? No, it's in the, it's Wait, in the headset. You, it's all in it's one. like in the oxygen mask. Right. But he didn't need to put that on, so they're like, oh, this is easier. Yeah. It's You're easier just, to yell out yell, to a car who then car. relays it back. That's easier than putting on a hat, <laughs> which is what I think of a helmet. It's just like a- A hard hat. Yeah, it's just a big- it's just a full-on hat. Exactly. That's all it is. What is a helmet if not a full-on hat? Yeah. It's just a full-on <laughs> hat. <laughs> that's deep. So, Taffy did the first test. Gradually put the throttle to about 90% and travelled the 30 to 40 metres and then applied the brakes. Everything worked as expected. He took some notes, changed some switches. He did a second test and again took some more notes. He accidentally pushed the lift-off button. <laughs> <laughs> so far- Taffy had travelled about 100 metres in total over two tests and only had one more to go. 
He was given the all clear to do it. Air traffic control had been holding up a fuel bowser and trailer with 3,600 gallons of jet fuel on board. But because Taffy was only going to travel another 40 metres or so, <laughs> they gave the fuel bowser permission to cross his runway whilst he did the final test. What? So, they're just going to- Because they're like a few hundred metres down there. Oh, my there. God, Dave. What's going to- No, Dave. What? So, they just- They start driving across. What are you telling us? I'm telling you about test number three. <laughs> oh, God. No. Okay, okay. So, it's not that he accidentally ends up flying. It's that he has to, to avoid- <laughs> Oh, my God, Dave. Well, he slowly- I'm stressing out, man. <laughs> he slowly throttled forward, just like the last We've two times. we all been there. <laughs> Sorry. I'm slowly throttling forward. <laughs> easy, It takes easy. a lot of the romance out when you announce it <laughs> <Yeah>. like that. <laughs> Throttling. I'm throttling forward. <laughs> and now I'm throttling back. I'm romantically <laughs> forward again. throttling. <laughs> but because of some unexpected vibration, no. he pushed the lever further than he had done previously. No. Inadvertently turning on and locking on oh. the reheat. Oh. No. With the engine suddenly coming alive, he started to take off oh down the runway. God, no. Towards- the fuel bowser no. towing 3,600 gallons of jet fuel. 3,600 gallons, yep. What is this system as well? Like, oh, no, you can go through. It'll probably be fine. It'll be fine. Because uh, it had waited for the first two tests yeah. and they'd gone, we can't wait any longer. I've got a lunch break coming exactly. up. Exactly. She'll be right. Yeah. He's only going to do a another 40 metres. You go. He's go just taxiing. It. We're hundreds of metres ahead exactly. of him. He's got heaps of space to do his little test. So, he- Suddenly, it's flying unbelievably quick down the runway. Like, these things are meant to take off faster than any other aircraft in the world at the time. He only narrowly avoided smashing straight into the truck. This will ease you, ease you, ease you a little bit. Will it? Taffy later wrote- Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> later wrote, yes, I did use some expletives, but I had no time to think of getting out of reheat because in front of me, the Bowser and trailer had just crossed the runway from right to left. So, my thoughts were to make sure I was missing them by a sufficient margin. No, I couldn't steer to clear them. Reheat takes you in a straight path like a bullet shot out of a gun. You can't the- You can't steer a bullet. No. Exactly. Try and steer a bullet. Can't steer to clear. Exactly. The time between finding myself in reheat and just missing the Bowser was less than the time I have taken to write this sentence. Mm. <laughs> That's how quickly it is. He's a very, very slow, slow typer. typer. Yeah. <laughs> One finger. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> There we go. Uh, for the for the listener, they fucked up the first high five. <laughs> and we high fived because we both made a pretty shit joke. <laughs> and that deserved a high five. That's, that's the job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. We just happen to be the best in the biz. And then we put our aviators on and we walk into the yeah. explosion. And I kept- into the explosion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We want to die. <laughs> After that. <laughs> Yeah, something yeah. explodes and you go, oh, fuck, I was meant to be there. Oh, oh. Great. i got to wait for the next one. <laughs> so, he narrowly avoided the Bowser. Wow. That's good. That but, is good. But oh, oh. as he hurtled- oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh. But as he hurtled down the runway, his next problem quickly came into focus. He was about to cross the main runway where he knew another plane was about to or had just taken off. Again, he narrowly avoided a collision. He's like, I can if the, pl- if the plane's just taken off, I can catch it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Overtake it. <laughs> Next problem. He was rapidly running out of runway. And just beyond the runway was the small village of Bradenstoke. He was already at flying speed and had absolutely no time to look for the gate key to turn off the afterburner. And that meant he had no way to slow down, let alone stop in time to prevent taking out the village. There was only one other option. He pulled back on his stick in the plane, that is, and took off <laughs> into the air. Jesus Christ. At, without a helmet, without He's oxygen. He's got no radio. Without, no, a, no, s- without no, a windscreen. No roof, no windscreen. He's just flying. Suddenly, he was airborne, surrounded by clear blue sky. And it's at this point, yes, I will remind you that he is flying a supersonic jet without any actual training. The glass canopy has been removed. He's flying an open cockpit. He doesn't have a helmet or oxygen mask on. He doesn't have a radio to be able to communicate with air traffic control or anyone in the outside world. He is completely on his own. And this has all happened in a matter of seconds. So, all the other stories we've heard so far have had um, somebody (laughs) helping them via radio. This is- 
solo. He's got nothing. In a plane he's never flown before. And, and he's never flown anything close to this kind of plane. And you're going that fast and he's got no windscreen. Imagine your face is flapping it, it would everywhere. It would be crazy. Probably, it would be hard to breathe, surely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, imagine That's like, what the oxygen yeah, for. Yeah, they have the oxygen for a reason, right? Even if you don't take off as, as high as they do. I imagine just the, the breeze in your face would be absolutely full on. Oh, my God. At this point, he had time to feel around for the gate key and turn off the afterburner. Thanking his lucky stars that the foreman had just happened to mention just how to turn it jokingly. off as a joke. Yeah. If he hadn't have, it's not a very intuitive thing. No. That it locks on and stays on. You can't just pull it back. The thing, the the lever would have just been locked in position and he'd be there pulling it. He would have just gone to the, the moon. What the fuck, what the fuck, what the fuck, what the fuck. <laughs> he would have gone, he would have gone <laughs> to the moon. He'd be living on the moon. <laughs> he'd did be he on write, the moon Did he write now. that from the moon? Yeah. <gasps> Maybe he has a laptop on the moon. Did he- <laughs> Did he write this from the moon, Dave? Did he write this from the moon, well, Dave? This was 66. Hang on. if we- Maybe Neil Young got it. Neil Armstrong <laughs> even got there a few years later and, and took his diary home with him. Neil Young could have been Dropped there Dropped well. off a laptop for him. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine. And left is that what's going to happen? <laughs> yeah. Dave, if we're spoiling your story, yeah, let us know. Yeah, tell us and we'll get AJ to edit Come all on. that out. Yeah, we'll Come edit on. it out, okay. Come on. You're ruining it. <laughs> his next worry was to make sure that the aircraft that he saw taking off was nowhere nearby so he didn't hit it in the sky. <laughs> And he kept a visual on Lynham Airfield where he'd taken off from. So, he sort of wasn't suddenly in the middle of nowhere going, where the hell am I? Mm -hmm. He also contemplated using the ejector seat, but that was impossible as the safety pins had been screwed in for the plane servicing. Sure. Mm. So, it's- you can't use it. So, Safe. you can't I like eject. the safety pins. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's so you don't just eject on the on the runway and, like, you know, just fly up into the sky and land, land on your head or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wouldn't want to do that. He doesn't have a helmet on. No, exactly. <laughs> he had only one option. He was going to have to attempt a landing, which in comparison to the aircraft that he'd previously landed, this was no easy task. He wrote, I was trying to combine all my limited flying experience into a few minutes of DIY flight training on a lightning. It wasn't easy, but I must admit that some of the elementary rudiments of my proper flying training and flying theory were coming in useful. I needed to get a feel for the aircraft if I was to get it back on the ground. My first approach was ridiculous. I could tell that my speed, height, rate of descent, even alignment wasn't correct and my best plot was to go around again. I can only imagine what his colleagues on the ground are thinking because in a few seconds he's just taken off without them. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Taffy, Wait. what the fuck? Taff. Yeah. <laughs> they just, they don't know what to do. And also, was- like, I, I sometimes when I think about this and you go, or they helped them, you know, find the runway and land and stuff. I, my sense of direction's shit. Oh, and if they're going like, so just uh, head north, I'm like, what the fuck is the that? Fuck? Is that left? What's north? <laughs> I don't know. But by this stage, you can see the map of the country. Where are they in England? You can see the country as a map, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're like, I know, I know what's north in England. <laughs> yeah. We go towards Scotland. <laughs> yeah, true. That's handy. I can see Scotland. I can see Nessie. <laughs> yeah. So I'll just so head towards that. To or away from Nessie? Am I going away? Oh, turn around from Nessie. Nessie. Behind me, yeah. got it. He's in the air, he's going like, uh, so Lionel Mayfield, was that on Earth? Or was that on the moon? <laughs> yeah, which of these which one? planets? Which of these- close to Mars. Yeah, which of these spheres should I aim <laughs> yeah. for? The I red one or? I can't be sure what direction my apartment faces and I it doesn't move like a plane can. You know what I mean? I don't know. Oh, yeah, what do you- When people are like, oh, so you just want to head up north up Collins Street. I'm like, the fuck is that? <laughs> Well, well, we have a grid system. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Collins Street does go east to west, though. What do you, okay, what? great. So, how do I go north? <laughs> yeah. What do you fly? What do you fa- face west, I reckon? Is the sun set in the west? Rises in the east? Sometimes. Fuck. Depends on what planet you're on. I'm a, well, it's true, man. I'm on my own. <laughs> on my own little planet. Yeah. I think it does face west. I think you're Yeah. Right. It's, Japan's the land of the rising sun, right? And that's in the east. <laughs> Well, the, the, so, well, I think because there's there's the Rising Sun is a song on Cold Chisel's album yeah. East. Yeah. Ah. Oh. So I think I think that's right. Great. I'm pretty sure. Rises in the East sets in the sets in West. Perth. Yep. Sets in the Perth. <laughs> <laughs> sets a Fremantle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, okay, West facing. Thanks, Dave. And this goes. <laughs> <'cause> I, <laughs> I don't get it. Were we talking about this on the podcast recently? Where that I. would I had to uh, relearn how to drive a manual because I was getting a manual car. Oh, soon. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, 
you're legally in Australia, probably most places, if you have, get your automatic license. Once you're off your probationary license of three years, you can drive it, you know, any normal car. Yeah. So I could legally drive a manual. I just didn't know how to. Yeah. yeah. And I, uh, so I just took the car to a car park and taught myself. That's kind of what he's doing. Yeah. yeah. He's doing yeah. that. He this knows how to drive a plane, just not this plane. Yeah, exactly. It's a bit more complicated. He's just doing it with a multi, but multi million just, dollar aircraft. He's up there just sort of figuring out, feeling his way around. You just hope he's somebody who learns best while doing and yeah, not like, yeah. you know, in theory. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. All right, bookworm. Yeah. He's <laughs> yeah. like, oh, I don't no. think Taffy Swashbuckling <laughs> Worcestershire or whatever his name is is a book nerd. It's an even better name. Yeah. Taffy Swashbuckling Worcestershire. All right. His second attempt to land was no better. So, he decided for his next attempt to come from the other side, which would mean if he crashed or overshot the landing, he would simply go into a valley rather than crash into the village. Sure. Smart. Yeah, that's good. By his third attempt, Taffy had got a feel for the aircraft and, in his own words, plonked it down in about the right position. (laughs) But unbeknownst to the unexpected pilot, there was a problem with his landing. Oh, no. He was used to landing smaller planes with two wheels at the front and one at the back. These planes are supposed to land tail first. Oh. But the lightning- had a nose wheel and two at the back and one at the front and are designed to be landed with all three wheels touching the ground at once. Oh, I see. Well, it's just not something if you don't know if it, you, don't you wouldn't know, know yeah. it. Yeah. You just instinctively you'd land it exactly, as you normally he's land. He's probably seen them land like that before, but it's just in the moment it's yeah. thought, this is how I land. I'm yeah. going to do what I know. Tail down, nose down, which yeah. is kind of like what happens with uh, when we, we, we fly commercially. That's what, that was my question. It's it's bum first. Bum first it? and then you hear it hit it very yeah. quickly. Onto the front. Yeah, it's not like you're not like scooting along on the back wheels for ages. It's just like it's a bump up. Yeah, it's bump like up. it's yeah. like how uh, <laughs> it's like how our <laughs> feet go heel toe. Exactly, it's, it's a heel toe. You're yeah, absolutely toe. right. Bump up. It's quick. Step together. Step together. Heel toe. <laughs> heel, heel toe. Heel toe. <laughs> so when he attempted to land tail first, the rubber tail bumper of the lightning hit the concrete at speed. Okay, that's not good. Taffy didn't even notice and immediately hit the brakes and looked for the button to launch the landing parachute. Yes. Designed to rapidly <sighs> slow down the aircraft. Because it's <sighs> it's so quick, this thing it needs a parachute. A parachute. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He located the button, all right. There it was, parachute. And the parachute deployed, but it just flew away as the cable had been severed when he hit the tail on the runway. It flew away. <laughs> you just started, you're looking in the rearview mirror. <laughs> there it goes <laughs> and deploying now and parachute flying away. <laughs> Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Why is the plane <laughs> slowing down? Why is the parachute over there now? Why, why is it doing huh. over there? Shit. So, without the parachute, he was careening down the runway at speed. He just had to hold onto the brakes for dear life. But if he's the engineer, shouldn't, doesn't he know? Shouldn't he know what wheel configuration it has? Yeah, but he's never landed that yeah. in that style before, so yeah. he's just never done it. Wow. Okay. So, he's just, he's just basically- Jumped all over the brakes. And it's like, this has come out of nowhere. Yeah. Exactly. It was one minute not going to be flying. And the next minute he's like, fuck, I'm going to land this gotta plane. Land this it, thing. Yeah. And this is the only way I've ever landed. Thankfully, he came to a stop with less than 100 metres of Get runway to go. fucked. I like to imagine he's also come to a stop sideways. <laughs> yeah. He's drifted in. And he's jumped straight out. He's drifted in. To go fuck his wife. <laughs> <laughs> Because she was there watching and she's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God, that's so hot. Oh, my God. This is so hot. He plonked it down there. Now, plonk it down over here. <laughs> plonk was such a funny word to use. Yeah, plonk the plane plonk down. Plonk it down. Oh, my plonk God. Plonk it down. So, he was on the ground. Taffy was safe. Obviously, he was a bit shaken and he was taken to the medical officer who gave him some pills to calm his nerves. Surely, you would get out of the plane, your legs would be jelly and you would just throw up. Surely. Like, that's insane. He would be so scared. Yeah. To qu- Ta- you'd have to take the week off. But to quote from Taffy. <laughs> Give him the week. Give him the week. He said, I felt reasonably calm because I had almost killed myself on five occasions in that 12-minute flight, yet I'd miraculously survived. That's a win. So, he was, yeah, looking on the plus side. He's like, hey, well, that could have gone really badly, but I'm alive. Yeah. The aircraft had some minor damage, but was easily repaired with a new set of brake shoes and a new rubber chute block, which is the wow. thing that smashed on the back. And a parachute, I guess. As for the fault with the XM-135 that he was flying, well, they kept testing and eventually it was found to be a button that was never fitted properly and one of its redundant wires was shorting out the radio during takeoff, which made the power power down. Although I'm pretty sure that Taffy proved there was nothing wrong with the takeoff. Even if he didn't want it to take off, it took off. <laughs> wow. It's very good at taking off. Yeah. Did, were there, like, repercussions? Did he get in trouble at all? Yeah, so there was a, a full inquiry afterwards to find out what the hell had happened. As he was the commanding officer of the unit, 
He was responsible for his own actions as well as the service actions of all the staff. Fortunately, he'd kept a meticulous log of everything. And because he was found to never have been breaching any orders, he was okay. Because he'd been given the all clear. He'd been suggested, yeah. hey, you should test it. Yeah. Okay. And he went, okay, it was an order. Yeah. Uh, I bet when he took off, he did a meticulous log in his pants. <laughs> Before I was like, I'd be so embarrassed if I put my hand up and somebody was more qualified. Imagine if he lands and he's alive, but he has shattered his <laughs> And they're all like, Taffy, come down. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just need a moment. He's he's a he has he's pissed his pants at a minimum. <laughs> yeah. Just to adrenaline. Fight or flight. Nah, and this is literal fight. Fight or flight. Or flight. <laughs> he's like, shot or flight. <laughs> Hey, why don't you just get my car from the car park and drive up here and then, like, I'll just drive home. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be so, I'd be like, I wish I'd die. Yeah. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. But if, Mate, if, come but on down. If I was one of his colleagues and he'd shat himself, I'd be like, your body did what it had to do. Yeah. I understand. I'm not going to make a comment about it. It blew out your rubber <laughs> butt, butt thing or whatever it was called. If it was me, I'd be like, I quit. I can't show my face here again. Oh, I'm alone, my butt. That's so good. <laughs> I'm going to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to move to the moon. I'm mortified. So he was also not in trouble. I genuinely think that every time there's bad turbulence. Oh, I'm like, if we, if we like, hope it like, if it starts to look like it's not going to be good and our bodies do a natural thing in fight or flight where it does, you piss yourself what? or Why shit yourself. Is that? I don't know. Um, so, but then I'm like, but what, if, true? but what if then we're fine and now I'm just sitting in my piss oh, for a bit? Sitting in your own filth. Yeah. What, what is, what's the the fight? Where does I don't even know what to piss Google. and shit come in to fight or flight? Which one of that is it helping? Well, I guess you're a bit lighter if you want to run away. <laughs> I've offloaded a litre of piss. <laughs> I'm just Googling fight or flight piss. It's corrected me to peeing. Uh, mm. Tense adrenaline-filled response may stimulate the need to relieve yourself. The fight or flight response may also increase the kidney's production of urine. All oh, right, and I've googled why poo yourself when scared. Uh huh. And uh, Healthline says during heightened anxiety, the amount of serotonin increases in your gut and can cause spasms to happen through your entire colon. Ah. Oh. Okay. It's kind of like why you why you pee when you're nervous. If you have that at all, like oh, before, if you're right. really nervous, you need to pee a lot. It's it's an anxiety thing, gotcha. which is a bit of a fight or flight. Anyway, that's- he, did, he didn't have time to shit himself off. <laughs> Twelve minutes, you got time. <laughs> I'm just saying. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes when there's bad turbulence, and I'm, like, and I'm like, what if I panic and then we're fine, but I've shat myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and then, and then we all just have to get off the plane as normal. Go, thank you. Yep, thank you. <laughs> 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 and they're like, enjoy your stay. Yep, thank you and so much. And I go, thank you, but I have reek of shit. And someone's standing right behind you. <laughs> Hopefully Aiden's that's, behind me. That's one of those few Human times shield. that there isn't like a log jam down the- Or there'll be, there'll be no log jam, obviously, <laughs> but down the, down the aisle. Yeah. Oh, there's quite a bit of gap behind <laughs> Jess there. I've shat myself. Sorry, I've shat myself. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the great fight. I've shat myself. I've shat myself. Uh, the passenger in uh, 43B has uh, evacuated her bowels. Uh, uh, <laughs> I reckon I'd be opening the emergency exit and just jumping out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see you guys later. I'm done. That's been fun. <laughs> that's, that's embarrassing. I'm going to go. <laughs> so, he also wasn't in trouble because there was nothing in the rule book to say engineers couldn't do practical tests. But this was later amended to stop future incidents. That's, so, this was like yeah. an air bud yeah, scenario. Exactly, there. Yeah. Well, there's nothing in the rule book. Exactly. <laughs> so, it was that he pushed the lever too far or something or it sort yeah, of got so a bit it, stuck? It, it shook and he pushed it too far by accident. Could, not, could a pilot not have done that by accident? Could they not? Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I like imagine- that could have happened to a pilot. So, it's funny that, like, engineers can't, can't do yes, test flights. But now. the pilots do hundreds, if not thousands of hours of training in that very aircraft. Yeah. Because so, even the highly qualified pilot who flew two other jets wasn't qualified for this one. So, I imagine yeah. they go over that kind of thing. They're very specialised. Yes, yes. And if it had taken off, he'd be like, well, I can switch this off and yeah. land it. No, I mean, it's a bit harder than usual because I don't have the oxygen or the yeah. or the roof, the canopy, but I could do it. But yeah. <laughs> rather yeah. than just winging it wow. on your first ever jet flight. After the inquiry, Taffy was ordered to see Air Marshal Sir Kenneth Porter, which he was a bit worried about as he wasn't sure if he was in trouble or would have his wings taken away from him. 
his pilot's license, but all the air marshal did was ask if Taffy agreed in the future if he should just wait for a qualified pilot. <laughs> Taffy wholeheartedly agreed. <laughs> That's so funny. That just sounds like your mum and dad. Now, I'm, you know, you're not in trouble. I think you've, you know, you've learnt your lesson. I don't need to add to it. But, but in can the we future, just go over it? Let's just, let's just don't you clarify. Think maybe, yeah. Young man. Do you agree? Taffy, what do you mm-hmm. think? Mm-hmm. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Now you can go play. <laughs> <laughs> Off you go. Off you go. Well, to quote again from Taffy, he said, he then told me to, this is the air marshal, he then told me to remove my hat, sit down, and proceeded to tell me some of his unfortunate flying incidents in Mesopotamia in the Middle East. <laughs> I was thankful that nothing more was to become of the incident and that I still had a job. So he's like, sit down, young man. Let me regale you with the times that I fucked up. I but- love that. That's so good. I know I've I've come across that before. You know, you hear of tradies talking about that. They're like, someone will do fuck something up and it's a big disaster, and that'll just kick off the tales of everyone going, oh yeah, yeah I remember yeah. when yes. I did a big fuck up. Yeah. Um, but it's pretty funny for the for that guy to be like, okay, so just to clarify, we agree. <clears throat> That maybe next time wait for a pilot. But the reason that he had to do it was because the pilots were like, I'm sick of doing this. Yes, and they had to get a new one. And somebody went, all right, you just do it. Yeah. So, it wasn't his call, really. Yeah, I think he's like, he- I just don't want to, you know, we want to keep working yeah. on this. Yeah. So, I think they saw that and they were like, look, at you were just following orders, really. Yeah. So, well, you're that's all good. good then. I don't know why I used the example of tradies. Comedians would probably do it more than anyone. If, you know, someone oh. bombs and then- I talk about the their war worst stories gig. come yeah. come out. Taffy's whole first hand. What's your account- worst gig, Dave? Is it the Santa skinny Santa suit? Oh yeah, 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 probably. <laughs> Is yeah. it this job? Is this your worst gig today? right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, before this one, this yeah. current one. <laughs> Taffy's whole first-hand account that I've quoted from a couple of times is awesome and has much more technical detail, if that's the kind of thing you'd like to read. It was published by his grandson on his website, danrostron.com. It's really, it's a great read. I will link that article in the show notes if you want to read a bit more technical stuff. He goes into some things I didn't quite get, not being a pilot or engineer, but yeah. if you're out there and you love that kind of stuff, definitely get into it. Taffy was not prepared for the story to go to the press and he was a bit overwhelmed by the media coverage at the time because it was quite a big story. His command headquarters suggested that he and his family get away from it all and they went on a holiday to Italy. This is again from Taffy's account. Imagine my complete surprise when on the first day of camp, (laughs) refers to his holiday as camp, on my way to find some ice, someone shouted, Hello Taffy, I've just been reading about your lightning flight. The world seemed a very small place. (laughs) Wow. Isn't that incredible just to recognise... Pilot from a, a, what, a blog or a, oh, no, it wouldn't have been a blog. News, from newspapers, a newspaper. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, like, I don't reckon, I need to have met someone a bunch of times before I'm confident enough. Yeah. Let alone seeing a photo in a newspaper. Yeah. And, and be like, oh, you're the guy man. from the newspaper. Of course, in Italy, here, getting ice. This all makes sense. Couldn't possibly just be a guy who looks like him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the confidence of that I, man. I wouldn't think of it, yeah. No. Nah. Unless he's really, he's got a very distinct look. Yes. On the other Ugly. thing, Bob, is at that same time you've also shut your pants. I have shut my pants and I really hope not to be recognised because I have shut my pants. <laughs> hey, you're the shitter. Oh, yes. Yes, yes it's me. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> no autographs, please. Years you don't after- want to know what I sign them with. <laughs> Years after the yeah. event- Taffy realised he had not dealt with the emotional side of his close encounter with death and he received psychiatric help to process what he'd been through. Okay. So, it did come back in the years afterwards. Finally, his account, published in 2013, ends with his reflection on the 12 minutes of his life that would be talked about for the next five decades. Over the intervening years, I have received many letters and reminders from people whom I do not know and praising my efforts to return myself and aircraft back to the ground safely. Yes, I have basked in some glory (laughs) when accounts of what happened have been retold in social gatherings. I have never sought publicity, but whenever it became impossible to suppress, I have had to live with it. I enjoyed my career in the Royal Air Force, but not because of XM-135. Wow. I like his vibe. He's got a great vibe, and that's why it's such a good read reading it back, because it's all written like that. These days, the XM-135 that he accidentally flew for 12 minutes is on display at the Imperial War Museum, Duxford, which is Britain's largest aviation museum. Cool. So, you can go, you can go see it. We should. Next time we're in town. Is it near any of the places we normally tour? Uh, yes. I th- don't think it's that far. Because otherwise, we, about- could just, we could tour to that town. I think yeah. it's not that far out of London town. Oh, London I town. Could, I could ship myself in any town. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> let me look it up. I'm zooming out now. Okay. If you okay. can shit your pants there, you can shit your pants 
anywhere. It is south of Cambridge. So it's- <laughs> I know it. It's New York, New York. Ah. Uh, obviously, our English listeners will say, but that's a, that's so far away. That's yeah. a full hour's drive. Oh, my God. Yep. 50 mile. 50 mile from London driving. It can take me an hour to get home from here. There's also a video of the XM135, and there's a tour guide giving a tour. This is posted a few years ago. And, um, and then he goes, this is the story of Taffy Holden, and I hope I get this right because he's with us here today. <laughs> and he turned up. That's cool. Which is cool. And he said, oh, I don't normally like to bask in, but if you're going to tell the story. Yeah. And he takes the microphone off him. <laughs> takes it <laughs> for a walk. Yeah. <laughs> so, you'll probably want to get into my mind. Pitch so. this. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, my story of, you know, talk down landings, but more importantly, Taffy Holden's unexpected flight. Wow. And, yeah, he's the non-talk down he flight. He didn't need a talk down, just had to work it out himself. Well, he couldn't have had one if he wanted it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Far out. Just put the helmet on. Put the helmet on. Put the on. helmet on. Put the roof on. I love that story. It's wild. Once you, once I heard it, I was like, we've got to talk about this. The way you were building it up, though, I was like, oh, this, yeah. is this going to be- yeah, Were you softening us up with some successes before like, yeah, a big like fire? He's going to crash straight into that, that it, tr- gallons of fuel. Here's the thing. You go- you're, you're shopping for a new car. You want to take it for a test drive. You putting the seatbelt on? I am. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm cutting it off. <laughs> I'm slowing you down. I'm, I'm, I'm kicking out the windshield. Yeah, you know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't need it. It's just a test drive. Put your bloody helmet on. What are you doing? Amazing. I'm so glad that he made it. I'm glad it wasn't a really bleak story. Yes. Um, it's a, a yeah. happy ending for him. Pretty amazing. And he got a happy ending. Um, so, Come on, man. What? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that brings us to everyone's favourite section of the show. And this is where we thank our great supporters who are on Patreon. They're possibly even listening to an ad-free feed right now. Oh, my gosh. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Is that even- Yeah, amazing. That must be- Oh, the freedom. How must must that feel? Wow. For only the low, low price of $10 a month. And you get three bonus episodes. What? Soon to be four. (laughs) That's crazy. The price is confusing because of different currencies and stuff now. It's like 10 US, isn't it? But yeah, and then like Euros is different. I don't know. Who knows? I mean, we don't know. We're, We're not doing finance years. No, it's you know, it, <laughs> it's the it's Patreon platform. <sighs> you mean someone at a party? Hello, I'm a financier. <laughs> I'd be like, my drink is empty. I have to go. <laughs> no, it's not. I've just shat my pants. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've shat my pants. <laughs> you're less embarrassed about that. Yeah. <laughs> Than saying you're a podcaster. Um, <laughs> uh, so the first thing we like to do. Uh, is the uh thanks co- some of our patrons thanks some of our patrons um but the first thing we do there is the fact quote or question section i th- actually think it has a little jingle it goes something like this fact quote or question ding! he always remembers the ding she always remembers the thing Perfect. and uh this is first of, of a few we do three little things here at the end and uh it's we're having a bit of fun or we're having fun mainly we're spending a bit of time um, making sure uh, our supporters feel a bit of love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we've got to thank the benefactors. And, uh, I mean, a lot of people just skip to this part because it is the best part of the show, let's yeah. be honest. Um, and in this part, uh, people who have signed up on the Sydney Schomburg level or above, they get to do uh, two rounds of voting per cycle, um, and they also get uh, the bonus episodes, the every feed, uh, the three piece tickets. Feed. Yeah, just three piece feed, the Zinger Burger, the big box. Uh, <laughs> they get the Facebook the- group. Yeah, yeah. Facebook group, discounted tickets, pre sales on live shows. All sorts of stuff. Um, and yeah, they also get to give us a fact, a quote, or a question, or a brag, or a suggestion. I read out four each week. I read them out for the first time when I'm reading them out. That is just to give myself the excuse for mispronouncing anything, or you know, maybe getting through a sentence and realize they've said something crook, which they never do. But you know, maybe actually one guy did once. But yeah. um. I wonder if that made the We edit. handled it really well. Yeah, maybe while Dave was away. So, oh, I was going to say, I think I edited that from my mind. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, uh, the first one comes from Tessa Chilcott, and they also get to give themselves a title. And Tessa's is Tess, the unicorn wrangler extraordinaire. Also wrangles heifer lumps and centaurs. Wow. Big wow. portfolio. Busy. Oh. What if it's the hardest of those to wrangle? Heifer lump. Um, yeah, what's a heifer lump? Is that, are they flying elephants? Unicorns are pretty hard because they're like, you know, hardly ever same. You see heifalumps and centaurs yeah, on every street corner. Yeah, it's true. Uh, anyway, Tess is offering us a brag and- uh, Braggadocious. Bra- <laughs> the, the braggadocious. <laughs> and 
test rights. My brag is that I'm having a bubba in early August. Hooray! Congratulations. Well, yeah, I wonder what this means. Like a bubba gum shrimp? Yep. At one serving? One serving in early <laughs> I'm August. I'm having it in August. I booked it in. Exciting. Okay. You got to give them notice. Otherwise I'm they having a reverse C section. They're they cutting it open and they're just putting the bubba gum shrimp straight in. <laughs> uh, I don't like the taste, but I like the feeling of being full. My earliest pregnancy symptom. Oh, it's a pregnancy. Yeah. So, my earliest this is preg- un- unrelated. <laughs> oh, true. new story. <laughs> my well, earliest- congratulations. It's the first we're hearing of it. This is really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> my earliest pregnancy symptoms were dizziness. Ah, this is dizzy stuff. But I also had criminally low iron and undiagnosed celiac disease. Oh, wow. my God. There's a lot going on. Yes. You'd be feeling rotten. Now, I can't eat gluten, but I can eat Bubba Gump shrimp. And that's what I'm here to- No, I'm- <laughs> no sorry. That's not what it says. It says, but I will have a baby in a few months. Uh, we'll be sleeping as much as I can before the non-sleeping stage begins. Mm-hmm. Love this show and all your other podcasts. Oh, my God, Tess, you legend. Uh, please keep making them. As I have a feeling I'll be needing some late night headphone entertainment. Well, congratulations. That's lovely. Tess, that's Early so o- good. August, a beautiful time to be born, let me tell you. Yes. And a beautiful time to die. Um, I plan on dying on my 100th birthday. Oh, great. Oh, work. great. Fantastic. What's the August um, star sign? Uh, it's Leo and Virgo. Oh, yeah. What are they all about? One's a lion. Leo's a, one's like, a virgin. Uh, attention seekers. Or they're, they're like- are you a Virgo, Dave? I am a Virgo. <laughs> I am the virgin. We must have discussed that before. <laughs> so perfect. I'm also a Virgo. That makes way less sense. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucks. Yeah. Uh, there's something wrong here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I assume that two-day gap between you would have separated you from yeah, the yeah. line. That, of cusp. <laughs> that would be so good. But for a moment, did you believe in astrology? I did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, for, re- for it's real. Moment. It's real. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Tess, and congratulations. Very exciting. Yeah, I'm out. hopefully we're pumping into your ears right now. And the next one comes from Michael DeRizzi. A.K.A. the guy who's trying to fix the stove in the do go on trip ditch kitchen. Oh, Michael. But I'm panicking. I don't know what to do, guys. I don't know what to do. <laughs> He's never fixed the stove before. This is taffy holding all over again. And this stove is creating heat. <laughs> a lot of heat. Too much. Uh, Michael has a question writing. Can you get that Donna guy who loves theme parks? That'll be Zach. He's done a few Disney reports for us, hasn't he? Yep. Um. To do a report on the opening of Euro Disney. I think his name is Tom. <laughs> <laughs> you know the guy from Mission Zach's Leguizamarama. <laughs> no, Bit that's of fun. John. John Leguizamo. Uh, and since you like us to answer our own questions, I say yes. <laughs> okay, great. We <laughs> would good. be so lucky to get Tom from Auntie Donna on. Oh, my God. Zach, easy. But Tom? Tom, Tom yes. Tom's He's great. Much more loose. Yeah. yeah. Tom uh, from the footy with... Broden Kelly. That's right. <laughs> Poor Tom, he's always there. And the sound on that, which I assume he's all over. It's, it's awesome. It sounds oh, so yeah, good. Yeah. He, but it, I did ask about that and Broden's like, oh, I, that's what he said. He didn't want it, the it's name. It's pretty of funny. It. Yeah, it is pretty funny. <laughs> For a two-hander show. <laughs> yeah. Some, usually a three-hander. Should we change this? Yeah. Do go on with, with Jess? Jess Perkins? <laughs> I think so. We've got to put you forward. <laughs> And we've Elevate got to take a women. step back. Elevate yes. women. Exactly. I was talking to Tom yesterday about doing, we'll do a crossover week where they come on. Who, who knew? Oh, my God. I couldn't land the name of my own podcast. Who knew it? And uh, I'll do the footy one. Great. Right. Love Perfect. that. Love that for you. Big get for you. It's. I think it's a beautiful combo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. World's aligning. Uh, thank you, Michael Dorisi. Uh, next, well, yeah. Now get back to work in the kitchen because oh my God. that stove is a real problem. Yeah. And we'll, also, if we remember, we'll ask uh, Tom slash John slash Zach. <laughs> yes. Uh, the next one comes from Sky, aka official biker of the pod. I wonder what kind of biker, like a leather clad. It's a capital B, so I'm going to say, yeah, leather clad. Leather clad or Harley, lycra clad? Harley, da- Harley Davidson. Okay. Hardly Davidson. Hardly Davidson. Uh, so, Sky has a question as well, writing, this question is for Dave. Oh, I'm If possible, here. please hold off on this until he's back. Okay. Well, there you go. We've done that. Because I don't read him until I read him. That could uh, not I have can, happened. I do often get through this part and be like, ah, fuck, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> ah, fuck. Ah. Uh, so, Dave and Jess, because you're also in a long-term relationship, when did with you- With each know- other. <laughs> exactly. Wait, have we gone public with that? Because I thought Kayfabe said that you and I were together. Yeah, but that's just a ruse to, to throw people off the scent. That's what I mean. Yeah. But why are you- I'd- Okay, we're going to have to edit that out. 
<laughs> okay, edit that bit out. If you're hearing this, AJ's failed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> edit it out. But anyway, so Dave. Yes, hello. This question for you. A married man um, whose wife doesn't believe in him. <laughs> Here's the question. The question, how's your marriage? <laughs> uh, Great, by the way. <laughs> Fine. A little defensive. The question is, Dave, when did you know they were the one? Oh. Uh, but they've answered the question, so do you oh. want to hear the answer first? Yeah. About their partner or my yeah. partner? Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming <laughs> they're their partner. I figured it out when, when you knew. <laughs> Dave, I should say, I haven't read it yet. It could be about yeah, you. Yeah, okay. Please. Uh, my answer is weird. I met someone recently, and from the moment I met them, I thought they were the one for me. For some context, I'm a very weird person, an acquired taste if you know what I mean. <laughs> but she lives like an eight-hour plane ride away. Oh, my God. What an episode to uh, be a plane ride away. Yeah, on. eight hours on a plane. That, you That's can go a, long a long trip. way. That's fur- yeah, you'd go from east to west coast. I'm back almost. Yeah. So, that must be- You can bloody get to Thailand for that. Yeah. That's about nine hours. It's close. Yeah. You know what I mean. Unless they live in Russia. I don't know if there's any country that is wide enough for, to- no, <laughs> for yeah. it to be the same country. But I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Wow. Uh. I suppose if you go, like, like the bottom corner of one to- No, even- Should have finished this sentence. Here we go. And in a different country. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Confirmed. We are very smart. <laughs> <laughs> and has a boyfriend that she's been trying to leave for, like, a year and a half. Holy shit. So, I'm giving her space to figure it out. So, you know, sorry for the long FQQ, but that's basically the bare minimum of details. It's a much longer story. It sounds like it. Yeah, sounds complex. Yeah, a few things going on there. Mm. Thanks all. Love heart emoji, love heart emoji, love heart emoji. Beautiful. Um, Could have said heart, but love heart emoji is even better. Heart emoji. Um, oh, just heart. Okay, yep. <laughs> IDK, if emojis come through, well, they did, <laughs> but there's three hearts after the things. <laughs> one, one for each of us. Thank you so much. Little heart for each of us. Every single step of the way, I just needed to finish the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> That's the lesson here, yeah. which we will not learn. So, Dave, when did you know? Oh. Very early on, I must say, I yeah. think. Within a few weeks of uh, hanging out with my now wife, I asked her if she wanted to go overseas t- to Thailand with me because I'd booked a solo trip. It was before we went to the Coast Movie Podcast mm. Festival and I had gone f- earlier. I'd booked like four or five nights in another hotel and- Oh, yeah. She was there. That's right. Yeah. And I th- was actually going to do a, a solo getaway. But then I was like to her, do you want to come with me on this trip? And then that sort of intense five days together, it was sort of from there. That I think started- it's clever when a, a solo man traveling to Thailand has someone as a decoy to at least <laughs> get people off the scent. Lay suspicions. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, it was basically from there. And then from then, it just became- uh, quite serious, quite quickly. When you know, you know. Exactly. It felt, mm. felt so great straight away and still does. Even if she doesn't believe I can write a number one hit, but still. <laughs> it's her only flaw. Yes. <laughs> and uh, it won't be her flaw anymore when you prove that you can. Yeah. Then she'll be like, oh, but I you hope- can't do another one. And you realise she's just trying to motivate you. <laughs> yeah, she's just figured <laughs> she's out how to, how to push you. Uh, good luck, Sky. Yeah, um, good luck out there. Uh, yeah, that is that is a tricky yeah, spot. Sounds like a lot's going on. Um, but exciting. How exciting is new love? Oh, love. Um, to be in love. Yeah, I didn't realize. I think we've we've had uh, fact quote and questions from Sky before. Never noticed that she's weird. Did you no, notice that? Never noticed that. I if think you, if you know what they mean. I think everybody feels at times like they're an acquired taste. Yeah, I think you're probably pretty great, Sky. The, uh, yeah, if the only real giveaway to me if that someone's weird is if they're from Austin, Texas. And yeah. that's a place where people just stay weird. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Uh, the final one this week comes from David Loring uh, with the title Trivial Dave. <laughs> and Trivial Dave- That's cool. Has a fact for us, writing, hello, friends. Hi, I ho- Dave. I hope you're all well. <laughs> Trivial Dave. I love you, Dave. I offer up the following fact for appraisal as a potential fun fact, but also perhaps as a cute slash touching one too. Oh, who's okay. in charge of cute facts? I feel like you probably as well. Surely, yeah. I'm the cutie patootie you of the pod. Portfolio. I'm definitely just boring. And yeah, I'm you grim. are boring, but I'm cute. And Matt's grim. Uh, <laughs> it involves two people, Annie Eyed, maybe, Itty, maybe. The daughter of a US diplomat and Scottish author Robert Louis Stevenson. Stevenson met Annie when she was a young girl and learned that her birthday was on Christmas Day and that she was 
a bit put out by having to share a birthday with such a momentous occasion. Mm -hmm. Never really getting a proper birthday of her own. So, he gave her his on the logic that he was old enough that he no longer had any use of it and the sh and it should be good put to good use. He wrote up a faux contract and had it witnessed <laughs> and as such gave her the 13th of November to celebrate oh, her birthday. That's cute. Uh, you apparently can read the contract online. He's got a, a link here. Um, but I, I could read it all out, <laughs> but it's got a lot of numbers and slashes. <laughs> Based on a letter she wrote to him after the fact, it seems the family took this up and used November the 13th as her birthday at least once, and she sent him a letter clearly having met, um, writing, I'm wondering, however, what you will do without a birthday. As the years roll by, you can grow no older, and perhaps will thus become immortal in body as well as in renown. But if I have two birthdays every year, I shall grow old at a terrible rate. The years will rush by me like an express train. And I shall soon be old enough to be my own grandmother. <laughs> uh, presumably continuing the trend, Annie Eyed bequeathed the birthday to her niece, who in turn left it to her granddaughter. Oh, that's cute. I think that is it. Is that a- Oh, I was about to say. But Jess, what do you think? Is that fun, cute, touching, all of the above? Yeah, all of the above. Great work, David. That's really cute. Uh, that works out well because I messaged David saying he, he put in a question for who knew it that I recorded yesterday, which will be out in a few weeks, and in it I called him a cunt. So I messaged <gasps> him. I said, um, I said I don't know if this will make the edit or not, but just letting you know that it wasn't about you. <laughs> it was just referring to a bit, which I think will be clear, but who knows wow. what will happen with the edit. Wow. Connor, Connor, my editor, is a wild man. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much, David. Um, That's cute. Trivial Dave. Sky, Michael, <laughs> and Tessa. Uh, a lot of big news in that one. Uh, personal yeah. news. Yep. And also great, um, a great suggestion and also a great cute fact. God, they really nail it in the fact quota question. They really Because it can be anything and they just make it beautiful. Yes. And uh, we don't have heaps left. So, if you are on the Sydney Schomburg level, get them in. Send them in. If you don't know how to do it, DM me on Patreon. Uh, the next thing we do is uh, we shout out to a few of our great supporters. Uh, we we do three each each week, and Jess has a bit of a game usually to yep. play based on the topic. I really want to do like Fish Millionaire. Yeah, great. All right. <laughs> so it's, it's an animal and then a And then a, so a title or a job. Yeah, great. Love it. I'd yeah. love my job to be millionaire. Um, well, that's why I said title. Yeah, I know, but I'd, I wish my job was millionaire. Mm. How much would you get paid? I guess you get paid a million. At least. Yeah. Oh, but, like, at what frequency? Uh, well, and whenever it dips below it, I guess you have to- You get a new million. Up. You got to get topped up. Uh, buy a million. They only work in millions. All right. So, if you drop a dollar below, that's an instant million. Yeah, that's clever. Pretty good. That is pretty good. So, you spend that million, you get another million. Yeah, you got to spend money to make money. Yeah, that's where that <laughs> saying came from. All right, if I can kick us off, I want to thank from- oh. Wadonga, what a beautiful neck of the woods. Uh, right on the border. Yeah. Or some people say Aubrey's the bigger part of that twin city. Nah. Well, I say, yuck. Fuck you make off, me want Aubrey. to spew in my mouth. <laughs> Wadonga all the way. And good on you, Aubrey, as well. Dean Street, Aubrey. What a what a place. Uh, from Wadonga. Guess what's your favourite street in Aubrey? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Aubrey Street. I've talked about this before. As a, as a kid on, on uh, country TV- uh, if if I was ever up in that area, every second ad was Dean Street Aubrey. <laughs> Come to Dean Street Aubrey. The cinemas on Dean Street Aubrey. We got all the fashion on Dean Street Aubrey. And they, they had like this sort of almost American sort yeah, of accent. Right. Dean Street <laughs> Aubrey. Uh, anyway. It's the Burke Street of Aubrey. Yeah, that's right. It's the Yeah, I wonder if they have a Paris end of Dean Street oh. Aubrey. <laughs> Uh, which Colin Street does in Melbourne. Yeah, anyway, we've got the Paris and Collins. That's Street. a very uh, cringy thing. Anyway, so um, from Wodonga, it's Jackie James. Jackie James. Okay. Dear Judy. G dear Judy. It's okay, I've misunderstood the game. <laughs> <laughs> dear Judy. What? What are those dear something letters? It's not dear Judy. Dear John. Dear John. <laughs> Um, but as a but feminist, the job I isn't change John. It to, no, uh, dear architect, dear architect, dear architect, dear architect. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, you're good job, yeah, pricking the pen on your tongue. Yeah. Yeah. Dear architect, <laughs> I hope this letter finds you well. <laughs> I write regarding a building you architected. <laughs> well done. Um, <laughs> well done. 
<laughs> architect. Also, your name, Judy. <laughs> okay, one second here. Um, I think hopefully this is that guy. Hello. Oh, no. Mansala. Hello. What's hello? What? You know that guy? <laughs> hello. 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 All right, from Mansala in Finland. Oh. I would like to thank Ronja Koivu. Oh. Wow, from Finland. Thank you so much for your support from Finland. Yeah, you, do you like Children of Bodom? Great, great band. Oh, yeah. Great fun band. The funk band. Not a funk band. Not <laughs> a funk band. They're not the funk band. They're not the funk, Finland's funk band. Shark. Uh, Tornado. <laughs> The title. Uh, shark Secretary. Shark Secretary. Oh, okay. That's a good one. <laughs> shark Secretary. Shark Secretary. Yeah. Uh, can you imagine that? Imagine it's walking got ty- in. T- touch typing down with the fins. Yeah. And you walk into a doctor's office and you're like, ah! Every time. They're yeah. like, there's a shark what? there. Shark's got to work. Yeah. yeah. Hi, can okay. I help you? I type it 180 Do you have an appointment? characters per minute. Okay. Come on. Rude. I've always, hey, I'm always moving forward, so I won't let it get me down. <laughs> Don't worry. I've, it's already hey, in the past. I can't go backwards. I forgive, I forget. Yep. Uh, thank you so much, Ronja Koivu. <laughs> uh, finally, from Penola in South Australia, <laughs> Karen Kahir. Karen. Karen Kahir. Okay, what about Karen is a beaver? Plumber. Oh! Oh! And they nailed the five. <laughs> that was five. awesome. That was amazing. Beaver plumber. Why do we both think plumber? I don't know. They, they go the down plumber. there. They, yeah, they, work, they go down there. They're, they're all like carpenters, aren't they, beavers? Yeah. They work with wood. But I guess well, they work with wood in the water. Yes. They love the they're water. They're plumbers this time. May I thank some people? Uh, I'd love it if you could. Thanks, Karen. I would love to thank from Lincoln, Nebraska. Oh, my God. Nathan Brandt. Nathan Brandt. Matt, name an animal. Uh, wombat. Wombat. Murderer. <laughs> oh, that's that. Like, but better know it is a wombat it's that a wombat. murders. Yes. Oh, okay. It's not a not person murdering who wombats. murders wombats. That's, Thank God. that's disgusting. Oh, yeah. my God. A wombat that murders, that's sick. That's fun. You're that's sick. fun. That's You're cool. Sick. Yeah. It could be something different. It's just what I thought of. What about murder at night but by day? A jewellery consultant. A jeweller? Jewelry consultant. Jewelry consultant. Wombat jewelry consultant. And I want to get into off. consultancy because you just go and you consult people. What yeah. do they do? Who they knows, consult. But they make good money. Shout out to any consultants. Thank listening. you, Nathan. So thank you to Nathan Brandt. I would also like to thank from Baytown in Texas, Nicholas Fontenot. Oh, oh wow, Fontenot. Fontenot, the eagle. No. Oh, uh, the eagle barista. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Eagle Barista. <laughs> I was just trying to think what an eagle like. My thought was- And I was thinking something like a judge, which oh, may be like a barrister. Yeah. Oh, That's you- actually what I meant to say. What did I say? <laughs> barista. barista. Uh, I meant barrister. barrister. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, were you also- Is that where you were going? I was thinking, what do eagles do? They fly. I thought pilot. <laughs> okay, maybe a bit too literal. Wombats don't murder, do they? Um, are we, well, Jess, are we thinking like American- Legal system has a lot of bald eagles yeah. all over They it. love them over there. Yeah. Good work. Thank you, Nicholas. And finally for me, I'd love to thank from Kennington in Victoria. Kennington. Hmm. Kennington. Or is that Kensington? No, nah, surely Kennington. they misspelled their own place. I would love to thank Patrick J. Early. <gasps> the Flamingo Scuba Diver. Oh, I like that. Imagine a Flamingo Scuba Diving. <laughs> That's fun. It's a suburb of Bendigo. Oh, there you go. And Patrick's the musician, I, I think I remember. Sent us, sent us a fact so quote a question a jingle? About, oh, yeah. about his music one time. Oh, yeah, that was great. That yeah. was really good. Keep it up. Do you want to bring it home and thank some people, David? I'd love to thank three beautiful people right here, right now. From Louisville in Kentucky, it's Jade Spade Marmalade. Oh, I like that so much. All one word, Jade. Jade love it. Spade Marmalade. Marmalade. She's Jade. She's Spade. She's Spade. She's Marmalade. It's very 80s. Very Madonna. Yeah. <laughs> love it. Vogue. Yeah. On the cover of a magazine. <laughs> Jade, Jade Spade, Spade Marmalade. Marmalade. <laughs> On the cover of a magazine. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what about uh, James Bay Marmalade is a, you name an animal. Okay. Um, jaguar. Jaguar teacher's aid. Jade spade marmalade. Jaguar, jaguar teacher's aid. aid. <laughs> That's good. Very important work. Brand representative for Lucas aid. <laughs> <laughs> this is good stuff. This is good stuff. You're welcome, Jade spade marmalade. I'd also like to thank from New York. New York. <gasps> is that, is that, can that be right? The Home double of up? bagels. <laughs> like well, the if you only can shit place- yourself there. <laughs> You can shit yourself anywhere, I've learned from this episode. <laughs> and from New York, New York, it's Julia Sun. Julia Sun. That's nice. Matt, name an animal. Different name. Um, okay. Uh, a white whale. Taxi driver. <laughs> <laughs> they have that's, them. Yeah. That's great. I can't wait to see a taxi in real life. <sighs> wow. Would so need excited. a sunroof for its blowhole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> white whale. <laughs> Thanks, Julia Sun. And finally from me. That taxi driver is my white whale. Quite literally. <laughs> I'm, I'm giving my white whale. It's your white whale. To this bit. You left your phone in the back of the car and you're trying to track it down. Yeah. And finally, from me, I'd like to thank, from location unknown, I can only assume oh. it's deep, deep within the fortress of the moles. A big thank you to L. E double L E. Maybe L E. L. And maybe with the surname that starts with S. Uh, maybe, but um, yeah. If if you if if you don't want to have uh, be from the mole people, check your Patreon settings uh, and give us your address. Yes, it means give you- us your address. Yeah. <laughs> it also means you can't get the Christmas card because we don't know where to send it. Yeah, to. we don't but use it okay. for anything dodgy. It- we don't have time to be creeps. No, L. We're busy people. Okay, L for lion. Okay, lion. And then you and me, Dave. One word each for a, for a job or whatever. Oh, okay. Um, Do you want me to kick it off or bring it home? Yes. Okay. Uh, bank. Teller. Okay. Oh, I could go and rob you idiot. Yeah, that would yeah, okay. be teller. Teller. the nerd way. The best way to rob a bank is to from work within. as a bank from teller within. for many years, know all the systems, and then, yeah, get it done. Okay, yeah. yeah. You're the inside person. I L. love it. I love it. Bank that's rob, why. That's tell. why no surname. Mm. Love it. Exactly. Because they, they're a bank teller, but they ain't no teller. Yes. Yeah. So they're not going to give away. They ain't. They, they ain't no snitch. Yep. Thanks so much to Elle, Julia, Jade, Patrick, Nicholas, Nathan, Karen, Ronja, and Jackie. You're all beautiful to me. Um, and <laughs> Not us. Not Dave and Jess. <laughs> we find they, you average. They find you disgusting. But we're in love, <laughs> yeah. so we don't, we don't see attractiveness in other people. And when did you realise that you love Dave? First time I saw him. Yep. Love at first sight. I look, knew very quickly. When you quickly. look into those baby browns. His wedding day was the worst day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> not true, not true. Jess was literally biting her knuckles. Yeah, she I was, was sobbing. Like, oh, yeah, and they were oh. like, "Wow, she's so affected by the love." And I was like, "No, no, no." <laughs> she was so affected by just stopping her- herself saying, "I object." I object. I object. Celebrant didn't ask, and I said, "You son of a bitch." Well, I think uh, Dave's wife put that in the yeah. stipulation. Said, <laughs> "Don't a- give Jess she- she- a moment." She's a real piece of work. Don't give her a second. <laughs> You give her an inch, she'll take my husband. <laughs> uh, all right. The last thing we need to do is Trip Ditch Club. Welcome in a few people into the Trip Ditch Club. Uh, these are people who've been on the shout-out level or above for three straight years. Uh, it's a bit of theory of the mind. It's everything you want it to be. I've just got Jade, Spade, Marmalade, Marmalade. stuck in my head. <laughs> on the cover of a magazine. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I picture this to be like, uh, you know, it's crushed velvet. Everywhere, red velvet, like Frank Sinatra kind of yeah. singing in the corner, jazz bar, something like that. Mm-hmm. Jess thinks about it like- <laughs> it's uh, got Frank in the corner. Frank's in the corner. Jess, you think of it more like an airport, airport lounge. lounge. Yeah, yep. Um, which until Siraj came along, I didn't even know what that- I wouldn't have even known how to imagine that. Yeah, uh, you, you were imagining like a gate that you're waiting to board the plane, but yeah. it's not like that. Yeah. And Dave, what do you imagine? Like a rock and roll club. Oh, yeah. But yeah, also yeah. there's a snooker room. Oh, love Low that. Low lights. Yeah. People are smoking, but it's also not giving us cancer somehow. We're very magical. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. That's nice. And uh, it doesn't smell bad. Dave normally books a band. He's also the MC for the night. Jess is behind the bar. Normally he's come up with a cocktail. Hasn't had it. Probably hasn't had one that's been drinkable for maybe a year or so. <laughs> but let's see if that changes tonight. Because I have a funny feeling Jess has come up with something delicious for this episode about people landing planes. It's plane fuel. <laughs> It's in a martini glass. Okay, well. Beautiful. That sort of softens the And I've poisoning. got plain food. Okay. Like uh, little trays. Oh, great. Little pastas. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, well, we're out Pretzels. of pastas. Um, but uh, I've got heaps of beef. Oh, yeah. It's a stroganoff. Stroganoff. <laughs> With beef, rice. Beef, beef. Stroganoff. <laughs> Strong. 
Strong, strong. Why can't I have a All of a clock. Uh, beef, 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 beef. Strong, 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 strong. On, 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 Going down a slide or jumping yep. up something at the Big water, water park, slides, yeah. and he doesn't remember being on. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the highlight of his life. Did he have a big bruise up the side of him as well? Yeah, it wasn't good. Anyway. A fun trip. If anyone goes back to listen and go, geez, the OC didn't uh, talk a lot in that episode. Now you know what? Concussed. Uh, <laughs> and so I what- always book a band. You always book a band, of course. Yes, you do. and you're never going to believe it because obviously with acts of this caliber, I book them months, if not years, out. Yeah. You're never going to be on this plane based episode. What have you got? We've got the Stone Temple Pilots dropping oh by. Oh my wow. God. Can you believe that? Huge. And this, and in the Tributage Club, everyone's alive. So it's just the, exactly. the classic lineup. Um, all right. So we've got eight. Is my count that right? What? Eight people to uh, welcome into the club. That's right, this Dave. Week. You're best when you get a bit of a flow going. Okay. And when Matt doesn't interrupt and he just keeps the momentum going, you're going to be fine. If he doesn't stop and go, oh, I could do better. Like, you Jess, know- can you stop interrupting? I'm trying to get a bit of a flow going here as I start to read out the names. <laughs> and Dave, you're hyping them up. Jess yep. is hyping up Dave. Yep. Hands on the butt. Get your hand on the bu- butter. Yep. Hands on the butter. One hand on the butter <laughs> to lube it up. The other hand. What? No. What? what? Matthew. What? I don't know. Just it's read just the freaking name. <laughs> I, I don't know. know. What's going on under the table <laughs> over there? Oh, my God. I thought no- I could smell butter. Nothing but weird. Alice and Dave's popping popcorn. <laughs> That's what that sound is. Jess isn't <laughs> shitting herself. <laughs> I'm okay. And that's how I'm a human it. popcorn machine. <laughs> All right, what we're so close to the end. I'm I sorry know. for the looseness. It's lunch time. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. Eight names. Dave. Uh, he he's on stage shouting them out. I'm on the, I'm on the door. I've got the the uh, clipboard. Oh my I'm reading God, out the just names. Just get to it. Dave's gonna hype you up uh, with weak word play. Here we go. From Katoomba in New South New South Wales, Australia. It's Gina Lawrence. Gina, great to see you. Yeah, Gina. From Tonbridge in. Ken in Great Britain. <laughs> it's Kate Robson <laughs> from Ken. From Ken. <laughs> Kate Robson. It's fate that brought you here tonight, Kate. Tonight. Kate and fate. You Woo! rhymed Kate and fate like you rhymed Gina and <laughs> see ya. <laughs> uh, from Tolleson in Arizona in the United States. It's Nick Pina. <laughs> I want to see how you. Uh, or Pina. Pina. Nick Pina. Great to see ya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Woo! From North or Walshen in Norfolk in Great Britain. It's Morgan Newstead. Stop the presses. Morgan Newstead yeah, is here. Yeah, extra, extra. Yeah, read all about Morgan Newstead. That's good. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. That was a one, two. <laughs> Aha. Uh-huh. Uh, from Somerville <laughs> in MA. I guess that's his mother in the United States. It's Adele Nitchus. Nitchus, you are so righteous. Oh, you're so righteous. <laughs> What's MA, Dave? We all never remember it. Massachusetts. It's got to be. Is it? Let me look up nah, quickly. No, I think it's probably Maryland, and we always think it's Massachusetts. Oh, it's Massachusetts. It's Massachusetts. <laughs> we, we double bluffed ourselves. We, yeah. And then we triple bluffed, and now- here we are. From Toronto in Ontario, which is Ontario in Canada, <laughs> it's Hayley Davison. Hayley Davison, savising the night. Savising <laughs> Never the- faily to have a good time with yeah. Hayley. Yeah. From, oh, my God. From the Windy City itself, Chicago in Illinois in the United States is Rory McSweeney. Rory, what's your story? Yeah, tell it walking. <laughs> in the club. In the club. Go walking the way, on walking your way in. in. <laughs> And finally, oh, how do I pronounce this? I can't remember because I said it wrong on the Super Bowl episode. Decateur. Uh, I said what, I would have said Decateur, so it's maybe Decateur. Who knows? From Indiana in the United States, it's Cat Rogers. Cat, I tip my hat to you. Yeah. Cat I, think, Rogers. I think their team was the Triangles. Am I remembering <laughs> that right? That sounds right. Decateur. Um, oh, my God. Imagine if I can- Oh, can we get the guy? Imagine if we can get the guy. Uh, uh, welcome uh, back uh, to another pronunciation. Uh, this, this week this we are talking about a place in the United States of America. Decatur. 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 
Decatur. Decatur. Hey, I'm from Decatur. I'm, I'm from Kat Decatur. Rogers. I'm from Decatur. Hello, I'm from Decatur in Indiana. I'm Cat Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you sound to us. That's how you sound. Uh, Thank you so much. Make yourself at home. And uh, geez, please grab a glass of rocket fuel. Cat, Rory, Haley, Adele, Morgan, Nick, Kate, and Gina. And uh, Jess, is there anything uh, we need to tell the listeners before we go today? Uh, that if you would like to suggest a topic, you can. There's a link in the show notes. It's also on our website, which is dogoonpod.com. You can find us on social media at dogoonpod. And uh, if you want to enjoy these episodes ad-free, you can uh, join up at patreon.com slash dogoonpod. Or is it dogoon? Who cares? You'll find it's it. It's do on pod. Do on pod. Well I said. Well said, mate. Thank you. Thank you, mate. Boot at home. Hey, we'll be back next week with another fantastic episode. The do go on guarantee continues week after week. <laughs> but until we then, it? I'll say thank you so much for listening and goodbye. Later. Bye. The decatur. David the, and I are just friends. The decaturs <laughs> were the Staleys. Not the triangles. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> 